We will call the meeting to order. Um, minutes from May 7, 2019. Fred, do you want to make a motion? Motion to approve minutes. Seconded. Can I propose a correction? Uh, sure. On page two, under old business, the CBA hearing was held May 2nd, not May 7th. Okay. So, motion then would be uh, to approve minutes with the edit of May 2nd for the town hall ZBA hearing as opposed to May 7th. Fred, you're good? Yes. All right. Uh, oh, before we get to our first appointment, um, comments from the public not listed on the agenda and the agenda was available in the back. So, yes, and not on the agenda. Not on the agenda. All right. Not on the agenda. System Baron 120 North Street. The 250th Celebration Committee would like to once again ask for the town's permission or approval to have a townwide tag sale the Saturday after Labor Day, which I believe is Saturday, September 7th. This year, though, we would like to only do it as a townwide tag sale. We found that having a central location flea market, frankly, was more effort than it was worthwhile financially. Um, what we did last year, and we would ask the town to do again, is any tag sales done on that day, the only proposition for tag sales would be in conjunction with the 250th committee. The 250th handles all of the advertising, Craigslist, newspapers, all of that delivers a map to all the homes that are participating in the tag sale so that if people people are more likely to find out about the tag sale and then get a map to all the locations. We had one person who participated last year who said she had done tag sales on her own previously and she made about three times the money doing it through this. I, believe, I wish I had looked it up. I believe last year we had charged only 20 or 25 dollars for the permit to participate through our way, which is slightly more than the town does normally, but that covers our expenses of having all the advertising so the individual homeowners don't have to advertise on their own. They get more value for their back. So my only question would be, if the person came in here for a permit, how would the town know that they had communicated with you? Will there be a form letter that you distribute? Or well, am I missing something? We will, we will advertise it throughout the town, but the only, all permits issued for that day will be through us. So we, the way we handled it last year was we worked through Lynn and people in the office that people came in to get permits and that went you know, sort of separately to us. Oh, okay, I see. The revenue from just that one day went to our community. Oh, I get that. I, I, yeah. I get that. I just didn't. How do you prevent? I mean, so you would be essentially issuing the permit, kind of. I think the way, technically, I think the way we handled it from a legal standpoint was we took out one permit for the town, you know, from the town, and we issued, you know, everybody signed on with us. Um, I'll have to talk to Lynn about how we handled it last yeah. year. I don't remember, really just. don't remember the details, but whatever we did last year worked. Right. Um, and unfortunately, the person who was in charge of that year, you know, last year, from our side, isn't here today. Okay. I think maybe, maybe you didn't get people didn't get permits here. I think they paid us directly. We just took out the one town permit, and anyone who came here to get a permit for that day was directed to come to us, to contact us. But I can, we can work that out. I, I, I have no people that just as long as Lynn has handles the logistics. Yeah. And, yeah. Are you considering that people have one or few items to bring them to your committee well, uh, booth or, or, or fire department we, booth because or whatever? We, we haven't discussed that yet because we're not having a central location this time. Right. Um, like we last time we had a flea market on the field right. by the fire station. So we had a table of things that people had donated. We may designate one home for those sorts of things. We haven't gotten into the details of that. First, we wanted to find out if we have permission to do it. The one other thing that we would want to point out to the town is last year we knew at least two people who did not take out a permit and sort of rode on our coattails and had a tag sale. One of whom I went up and talked to, and they gave me the, I think it's 20 bucks, they gave me the money. The other one we did not confront. Um, 
we would want to discuss a way for enforcing this. Because those are people who are, do, are doing it with no permit at all, which is against the outcome. Right. Okay, yeah, it's, it's enforcement of if they don't want to do it through you, they, how, what's our rationale for saying no to someone who comes to us for a permit? Actually, that would be but this wasn't the people who came to the town for a permit. This is people who set up and saw, oh, a town for a tag sale, I'm just going right. to my garage, right. and they didn't get a permit from anybody. Right. Why don't you talk with Lynn? Lynn can talk to us about logistics. And mm -hmm. I, I think it's a great idea, personally. I just want to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. Okay. Did you have a specific weekend? Uh, September 7th. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Anything else? Perfect. Let's get that information out there now. That the Saturday after Labor Day, we have a big day, and we. Yeah, that's access. why we want to get this moved before people leave for the summer. <clears throat> right. Okay. Thank um, you. Thank you, Melissa. What do we got? Anybody else? Uh, Brian. Does anybody else have a couple comments? Oh. I'm sorry. I've never gone to a meeting like this, a little nervous, but I came here with a lot to say. I don't know if it's too much, how to present it, but I'm here and I have some things, feedback to give this town because I'm ready to move and I feel like I'm getting pushed out of town and I'd like to express some things to this town. Okay. And I don't know, I, I don't know where to go with it. That, so. that sounds like a longer conversation than, and we have an agenda. So why don't we plow through the agenda and we will have a conversation as the meeting is closer to an end so we can give you your the due time that you deserve. But we have people scheduled at certain times. Yeah, because right someone said just come to the meeting. And you can. Yeah, yeah, we just have to keep it somewhat order. It yeah, order. that's why I asked. Yeah. I, I, I'm a guest here, I feel. And, no, we're all... We're all right, and I feel like I, I'm a bigger part of the town than a lot of people realize and what I've done for this town. Okay. Police, fire, military, veterans. Okay. And so my, so okay. you let me know. Well, right, I, okay. I Thank you, that. great. Okay. We have uh, a poll petition process. Uh, and Melissa Hancock is here from Eversource to discuss the process. Brian, why don't you walk us through? Yeah. So I'll start. Um, and I, I had sent Melissa an email about this. Well, what's, what's, what's been happening is that, um, or, or I think the, the sentiment of the board is that the information that the board's receiving from Verizon, which is, this, this, we understand it's a Verizon set town, so they're responsible for poll placements. The information that we're getting um, is pretty generic in terms of the descriptions of what's being proposed. It's just the simple sort of pole wires fixtures. And at least four out of the last six pole petitions have been for the larger um, regulator banks or whatever it is. It's the second pole, it's the, the 18 foot steel platforms or the three yeah. large transformers across it. So I think, and you guys can jump in any time, there's concerns that the information that we send out to the abutters is not adequate yes. um, in the sense that if well, I'll use myself as an example, if I had a, if I received notification that said, "Oh, you're going to put a single pole in front of my house," I might not show up. But if you're going to say you're going to put an installation like that in front of my house, I'll probably show up. <coughs> um, so there's that issue about how do we provide? How does the board get information as to the installation that's going so we can convey it to the abutters? And then this really the second part of it is there's. It seems like there's at least four of these proposed installations, and we can only guess based on the, the pole position 18 feet from into, um, mm -hmm. an adjacent pole. So we're guessing that those are regulator banks, or I don't know what the proper term is, but um, so it seems like there's a bigger picture here that maybe, that maybe the town isn't privy to at this point. Because mm -hmm. um, right now I think there's, counting the two that the board received recently and the, the two that we had site visits about, that would mean that there's four of these installations going in. And so it begs the question, are there more? And sort of what's the bigger picture? So um, well, I'm looking for ways to get the information um, so we can inform the abutters as to what's being yeah. proposed. And, and on top of that, and the example is when you guys did the, we did the poll visits, which I personally found to be the way we should do all of these things, uh, as much as it takes time. 
we get to see it, we get to discuss different options. It's it's a it's a clearly defined communication vehicle, and I think that's very helpful. That being said, uh, we visited those two locations, and and I know that we talked about what other polls are are in the in the works, for lack of a better term, mm -hmm. and there wasn't any discussion of them. And then I came into Brian's office a week later, and there were two more requests for for new polls with no rationale behind why they why they why, why the request was being made and so my frustration was they certainly were in the queue a week earlier mm -hmm. and <clears throat> it's the perfect time to have it an in-person conversation as opposed to a conversation via regular mail email which is just yeah back and a, forth and it's a brutal way to run a run a town mm -hmm. so that's that's yeah, why of course, that's, I mean, that's why I'm here, and that's why I've been here a couple times, unfortunately. I mean, not unfortunately, but um, we don't want to waste your time. So I just want to introduce uh, someone I brought along with me from our engineering department, Mike Rosenberg, um, who will just kind of speak to the process. Um, and I do apologize, because we are we are listening to you, and you know we are putting these, uh, these regulators in other towns, too, and we're getting the same feedback. So at this point, it's us kind of changing our process with the poll petitions for, the, for this project. Um, so I'll just kind of have Mike go over uh, the, the project. Um, and I think, unfortunately, it was a, a click send before, um, before everything kind of got back to our engineering department. Um, and this kind of went out um, before we could kind of change the process and you know change the, the language to make it more clear um, what equipment is actually going in. So I'll just kind of have Mike take it over. So. Sure. Uh, before we get that, I kind of agree with what Jonathan is, is saying. You know, the the initial proposed location probably met your criteria and I looked fine on paper until some of us went out there and said that's hurting property values where you proposed it, and I don't know what you looked at when you decided that, but maybe the, the process should be that, at least for these regulators, that you come to this board or even or tell Brian where you're proposing to put it to, before you identify a butters to see if that is agreeable, at least to the board and, and maybe some other departments in, in town. And if we agree that that's a feasible location uh, then identify, then notify the voters and come to a public meeting like this. Otherwise, you're, you're creating two public meetings, mm -hmm. possibly, uh, that, may, uh, that aren't necessary, may not be necessary. Mm -hmm. The location is going to be different. So, we, yes, sir. Um, <coughs> Michael Rosenberg, uh, East Street, Southampton. I am a supervisor for field engineering design for Eversource. Um, the particular projects in question um, have been related to DG solar installations and also another project we're working on, VVO, um, distributed automation. Um, it's basically based around circuit improvements. You know, regulators help regulate circuit voltage um, because of distributed generation and also need on the system, the, the, there's fluctuations, so the regulators help regulate that so you get more consistent three-phase power to three-phase customers and it also does help uh, single-phase customers single-phase homes as well um, so the regulator banks um, there are two options we can do regulators on single poles or a regulator bank platform which i'm sure you've gone over this um, with the reps you met before um, <laughs> so the the location of the platform, and I wasn't necessarily involved with that, but I can speak to the fact that, you know, platforms should not be going where they're obstructing view, where they're obtrusive, where they're invasive, sort of your your public view, right, out, out your window, that type of thing. Um, and that was a, you know, that was a shortcoming in the sighting of that one by the individual. And um, we've had internal discussions about not doing that, right, going forward. It's just not where you put them. Um, we've had the same conversation with the city of West Springfield for similar situations. Um, regarding the, I guess, the, the, the churn, right? So you, you did a site visit, you site located, I think you met with Nick Kriegel in the field. You found an acceptable location for the platform, which is what we'd, we'd like to do, right? We try to find <coughs> open areas or areas that aren't, um, you know, obtrusive. Um, during that same time period, 
other petitions were being worked on so that just it didn't make the full cycle to let everyone know hey we need to do this going forward we need to provide more information we need to properly um, really look into the location of these um, see and, and, and my concern with that is that while the process may not have been to the point where you would let the butters know yet mm -hmm. clearly <clears throat> internally in the company you knew that it was in the works somebody we, did we did uh, just keep in mind that it may not be the same department working on it so we have engineering groups in connecticut we have engineering groups in hadley in springfield and while they do all report to someone that exact location in the process you know yeah but i'm not sure we should be penalized for the administrative bureaucracy challenges i don't think there's a, well i don't see it. i mean we're not I don't think we're um, we could have just the, the, the and again I'm basing it on memory from from a few days ago when I was in Brian's office but the postcards that were shown one was up pretty close to the center of town I believe am I all oh, the ones that that we're holding right now yeah there's one on, on Christian Lane just past the, the bridge over the Mill River just up right the center so a pretty far distance from other work that's going on so we were, were left thinking we don't know what the no pun intended connection is mm -hmm. to what we already saw maybe there is none mm -hmm. but there's no description of why Correct. the poll was going in and and my only thought is so when I say penalized it's meant, maybe, perhaps not the right word but clearly someone in the company knew that these were going to be addressed so the request is going to be made soon be made soon rather than brian and i sitting in this office scratching our heads we could have said oh yeah that was the thing the other thing that they brought up in our meeting and we actually went and visited it because it, it, no I, I understand believe me I, I can understand the frustration it's so when we request a poll set from verizon we send a, it's called an exchange of notice they call it a 605 form um, in that exchange of notice we do state the reason for the poll change. Um, on the most recent one on Christian Lane, I was reviewing them. Our form to them states it's for um, three-phase regulator equipment or three-phase regulator platform. Right? There is language in there. That language didn't make it to you, and that's something we need to work on making sure that that language for those petitions and comes to you. And what's the purpose? Again, three, I'm not even gonna try to repeat the, 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 the term you just, just used. Mm -hmm. But it's inside baseball to us. We have no idea what that means. So to put it, you know, poll hearings for dummies, I don't know what it would be, but we don't know what it does, we don't know why it's needed, we don't know why the distance from what we were just talking about, whether there's a connection there, whether this is a new issue. There's just, it's not just the three phase piece, because that really means nothing to us and it doesn't mean anything to our residents. It's what the impact is on delivery of service and why and where and who. That's, that's my frustration. Am I voicing that? Yeah, and I, and I think it, it, it kind of relates to one of the, I think what Brian had in here is, is the overall plan for, for the town. Where are all these gonna be in the town? And, and maybe somebody thought of this when you proposed the solar farms in town. How are you gonna connect them to the system? Where are you gonna put regulators? I guess if that wasn't planned on, and I, I think you're 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 short-sighted on your planning efforts here. Well, I think if, if you're talking uh, about a customer's interconnection, right? So well, no, the solar farms. We're talking the solar farm connections, and that's what we've been told. Right, so here privately, that, privately owned, right? right we've been told that these out. regulators mm -hmm. are to accommodate the increased load from the from the solar farms, mm -hmm. electricity generated from them, and. It just seems that that should have been thought about when the location of solar farms been proposed, and well, not after the fact and deciding, oh, now where, where are we? How are we going to control this on the system? Where are we going to put the regulators? It's after the fact. So we are, in regards to it, I won't speak to sort of our installations, but a, a private installation, a private solar farm. Right? We are regulated through tariffs by the government on how we proceed with that process. Right, Massachusetts. Okay dictates how we proceed mm -hmm. an application comes in and I don't I don't work in that department so I'll 
I'll give you my layman's view of it. An application comes in and a circuit study is done on what needs to be improved on that circuit to, circuit to maintain proper voltage for all customers. Concurrently, that, pro that project moves forward. The interconnection, right, so the three poles in, for instance, from the road, that doesn't necessarily rely on the, the overall circuit study. But the, the regulator bank, some of the things you're seeing outside of that interconnection, those do, you know, those do rely on that circuit study. That circuit study can take six to eight months. So we go through the process of designing, and then when we get closer to, you know, we'll call it in-service interconnection date, which is driven by final customer payment, you know, our engineering group, which is in Connecticut, that basically looks at the grid as a whole, says to maintain proper voltage, to maintain consistent power for all residents, we need to look at putting devices here and here. We need to put in, um, you know, three-phase reclosers, automatic switches, right? Because we need to protect customers outside of that as well. So those device locations aren't always known in the beginning. It takes months for the circuit study, and you know, we we can't anticipate the customer interconnections, right? Because those are those, they call or they apply and they want to interconnect, and then we also can't necessarily anticipate what is going to be needed to maintain proper voltage on that circuit, for instance. Um, so it's an evolving process. It, it is, and I think, you know, from our standpoint, once full payment is made, um, and we know, because some of these developers, they do sort of drop off, right? They give a, an application payment, and then they realize total cost, and then they don't actually develop. But when full payment is made, and we know what devices are going where, I think at that point, we need to reach out to the towns and say, this is what, <laughs> This development, um, you know, this customer, this is what is going to impact the circuit um, and the town itself. And we can, you know, we can easily bring that into our process. You know, have a meeting with the town administrator. You know, maybe an invite from the chair. You know, so that way everyone's in the loop when this comes about for these types of developments. Because it really does have to be a better product. It's a broken. Yeah, we agree. Right we now. agree. And, and I'm still. I know you've heard it. Heard this. I'm still just irate about those poles off Christian Lane. I don't find solar unattractive. I find the telephone poles incredibly unattractive. And to have three or four within 10 feet of each other go up, essentially in somebody's side yard, I'd, I'd go to court and make you take them down. It, it just, it, that property value dropped and no one can tell me it did not drop because of not because of the solar, but because of the telephone poles that now are a permanent impression in his side yard. And it's gotta, it's gotta get better. And what, what makes it, it, to me, even look worse is you got the transmission line crossing the Connecticut River. It's buried underground, both sides of the river, through farmland, 500 to 1,000 feet on either side. Not a single pole until you come to the to the highway where you're connecting, mm -hmm. all of it underground. Why can't these be underground or limited to one pole like like they are there? It's a, it's an overhead area, um, just in terms of construction standpoint, right? So we have overhead and underground areas. Um, New England is not known for its underground electrical distribution system, right? We do it in new developments, housing developments, and those types of areas. But we are those just customers bear the cost of that under sure, right. Yeah. right and so it's just New England is just sort of it's odd right because we have horrible winters and horrible windstorms and but all our lines are above ground for the most part unless you're in the city um, and, and, and not to, 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 to kick the horse but I'm pretty sure in that conversation we talked about the new solar farm going up on what I call the corner of River Road and Christian Lane. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm sure I asked, and may, again, maybe I'm butchering this a little bit, and I apologize if I am, but I'm sure I asked whether there were going to be pull requests inside that property. So once you went in the drive, mm -hmm. and I was told no. And I believe one of the requests that we now have is for poles going not terribly deep, but into that drive area, which is going to impact the neighbors. And so I, 
I, I asked the question specifically because I was trying to avoid the disaster a mile down the road as the crow flies. Mm -hmm. But Jonathan, I, I, I think that was on the plans the planning board approved, the site plan, the site reviews, planning board, and I think what ZBA got involved maybe. Uh, Perhaps, on, yeah, I, I apologize but, for. But they were on plans, the pole locations were on the plans time. on there, so it's. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah. So we got to fix it, I, and then we can't spend Can an I eternity. Can I just ask a question? Yeah. So, so we don't know of any other solar projects that are planned for Waitley right now. We know of the of the Long Plain Solar that's on the corner of River Road and Christian Lane. Can you give us a Can you give us a map of the town with all the improvements that you? know to date from the different departments is that a possibility so you're looking for sort of mainline circuit improvements related to that so what what would be adjacent to the road um, yeah. if we'd be putting up devices or service connections or inter service interconnections um, I, I think that's doable yeah I, I'd have to look at the list to see what you know projects are out there because um, there are projects like I said in different phases right and they're there are projects then in the queue. It would be okay to put up. those on as well. Put them a different color. But, say, you, you mean things that are things that are like 100 percent for sure, mm -hmm. and those that are somewhere uh, in the queue. Yeah. That would that would be fine because it's really really strange to told at one poll hearing that oh we absolutely need this at this location on River Road because of the voltage regulations needed, and then the next week another thing arrives. Oh, we absolutely need this over here on. And then the next week, three more arrive, and all of them having the same deficiencies. All of them uh, having very little information on the card, so that people getting a card would have no idea what's going up in the air. Um, and with no consultation of the of the local people, as opposed, you know, we went out there for two of them. We went out there, and you went out there with us, of course, yeah. on two of those, and we found better locations for all of them. Why isn't that the first step in the process instead of the last step? Um, and now you're delayed on those because somehow you know the paperwork has to go in a second time if you change you know dot dot i differently or cross it differently. Yeah. And um, Joyce, I completely yeah. agree with yeah. you. Um, and we appreciate your feedback and we hear you. Um, and you know that's kind of why I brought Mike because he has a big voice in the department and it. It's feedback like that, which we can take back and make it better for not only you mm -hmm. moving forward, and, but other towns in the area. Um, you know, I don't sit in the engineering department, thank mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I, I do want to. We do want to work with you and make this process okay. better. And we do apologize for you know this the miscommunication on that paperwork going out. Yeah, you sure there's not one in 152 West Road? Okay. <laughs> These are the connections you're talking about to the system. Is is that these large solar farms? Are you talking private individuals that put solar on their property? No, that's the, the the private individuals really. You're not going to see an impact. They do service upgrades at the house. Yeah. Um, maybe a new service to the home, new overhead wire service, but it, you won't see um, you won't see improvements on the circuit for one, right? But if you have four thousand houses. 3,000 put we solar on there. 750 houses. Right, but just from a from a grand <laughs> scale, right? If, if 750, if 500 put solar on their roofs, mm -hmm. then there would be circuit regulation requirements um, just because of all the generation going through. Um, it, it, just to go back on the, the one point about, um, you know, us kind of changing our process and changing the steps, I think, it, I think it's great and I, and this is a positive, right? This is a compliment. You are the first board to really request that of us, right? So you are the you leaders. Know, you, well, you are the leader, right? And you and you may assume that we're hearing it in other communities, but we're not, right? A lot. Some communities are okay with locations and siting and those types of things, and you are the, I guess, the leader in the change of this. So we have to catch up, right? You are the first one to speak out to us. We won't be the last, though, I'm sure. No, no. I mean, okay. so, we're not so that smart. Other people, are, I'm sure, are talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or locations are. So. Okay. Awesome. So, do you want to 
So who would I work with on, if we were to kind of sketch out or outline a process of what would be acceptable to the town and to Eversources to make this go quicker and, and, and smoother, who would I work with for that? So probably probably me. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back and kind of talk to the group and explain, you know, your request. And it doesn't make sense in my point of view. I would rather come out and do that site visit with you guys before we send those cards out and waste time and money. Um, so. Um, let us go back to the group um, and then I'll kind of follow up with you um, moving forward. Okay, and I, th I think just to be clear, it, it's not the it's not the single poll that somebody needs yeah. for to hook in a, you know, to right. 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 It's when, yeah. we, when yeah. we get beyond that, when we have the, the regulators and the platforms. Understood. And, Understood. That yeah. and, and I would just add, and this, this is something for you to pay attention to. This is also a Verizon issue. Mm -hmm. But I know that I don't have any patience to hear you guys say, well, Verizon did this. And Verizon will then will come in, I guarantee, in the next meeting and say, well, Eversource did this. And then it's just a circular firing squad between you guys. And then the, 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 the solar customer is going to be in, in there as well saying, well, it's not us either. Mm -hmm. And I get you guys are your own companies, but... That's the second thing on our list. The process, the process. has to include all stakeholders. Yeah. <clears throat> Otherwise, we could have the same meeting next time with Verizon and the next time with Nexamp and it just it just there's got to be better communication. Tell them to visit the sites Agreed. before they come here too. Agreed. Yeah, that's Agreed. helpful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So thank you guys for, thank you. for coming thank in. You. Appreciate it. And you were very helpful. Thank you. And um, that's why I brought. I don't have a card, but Melissa has my information. So if you have questions, um, you work through her. She can give you my number. You can call. Okay. Anything you need. Okay, thank you. Thank Thanks. you. All right, we are 16 minutes late for uh, Chestnut Plain Road residents to discuss concerns related to traffic, sidewalk condition, noise, trees, and light pollution. Melissa's well, a spokesperson. Oh, yeah. She, she told I think, me. Can you come up a little closer up here? Yeah. Crying seats being um, first of all, thank you. Um, we met, a couple of us met with Ryan a couple of weeks ago, and he said the best path to being heard was to you know, find some time with you all, and so here we are. Um, maybe a little bit of history. Yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. A little bit of history. There's some of us from um, North Street and from Chestnut Plain Road, and um, in the conversation, living close together, you talk about this and that, and some of these things are on this list and that meeting that we had well, maybe a month or so ago evolved into all of these things because we we live there we're concerned about ourselves and everybody else who lives there and passes through there so we came up with these few items we um we're not really we're not here to complain but really to ask for your help and and knowing that you hear us and um that um, we could get some feedback from you if it's not tonight sometime we understand a lot of these things on our list are being addressed by complete streets, and that's awesome. So I don't think we really need to go through those things again unless somebody has specific questions about those things. I mean, we, most of us have attended those meetings, and we're, we're up on when that's happening and the funds that need to be spent by a certain time of day, you know, next year and all that. Some of the things that complete streets isn't going to address um, are, um, what well, I guess we're considering noise pollution. Um, the, Jake breaks and we looked that up, you know, as to what it is and it's, you know, I, I guess everybody knows what it is and how they kind of barrel down. We know what time it is to get up in the morning because the big trucks come down off Haydenville or come down Chestnut Pine and rip up Haydenville and they use their Jake breaks to slow down instead of... What time of, is that? What time is that? Um, 4.30. Yeah, I think we're in agreement. It's 4.30. Yeah. Until like 8.30 or so. Yeah, and then again in the afternoon as folks are going home. Um, we know that it's the end of the day, and that's that's a real reality. I remember my first summer here, and I thought, wow, that's crazy. It's a beautiful little, we call it, you know, Main Street and all this noise. So that's on our list, and we wondered, other towns have Jake break ordinances, I guess. You know, maybe it's a sign, but with your creative abilities, maybe you could come up with something that would help cut down on, that's a fairly obvious item on our list. Um, you know, it would be great. Um, Speeding traffic, we all know about the speeding traffic and I've made phone calls, I know others have made phone calls and I know at one point there was a 
policemen there for a little bit, it's really hard to monitor it all the time. But we know that places like Williamsburg figured it out. You don't go through Williamsburg higher than you know 25 miles an hour. Probably Waitley can figure it out too. Um, I've had close calls with cars. I know others have had close calls with cars. Walking the animals, you don't walk them on the sidewalk because it's hazardous. You walk them in the road. I mean, that's that's a whole kind of package thing that's going on. So, and but we know, we hope. You don't really mean sidewalk, right? You mean the bird. Well, you, the, yeah, like walking the, on the side of the road, side right? Right, not in the road. Yeah. Right. Although in the winter, when there's snow, I had an incident, and the town knows about that. I called. So, um, just another, hey, help us out here. It's not safe. Not for us. Not for anybody. Um, the, the tree and front lawn maintenance um, is kind of a conundrum to us um, and I understand because I made the phone call that the reason that we are responsible for those strips between the sidewalk and the road is because that's the way it's always been and okay <coughs> but, um, maybe we could do something about that and I think what brought that up this time was the hard winter and all the high winds really brought down lots of larger branches and tons of those tiny little sticks that before you even start spring cleanup, and these are big front yards, some of us have, I don't know what the size of it is, you, you know, everybody knows how big those strips are. You have to go out and you have to pick those up before you even start to mow. Some of us can do it or we have to pay to do it or we can't do it anymore. And that we're looking for some creative ideas about how the town might maintain its own property and um, you know keep that beautiful chestnut plain road center of town looking the way perhaps it should look um, and not at the expense of the homeowners and taxpayers I know that the um, but we all know that the library gets mowed on a regular basis just maybe we could do that whole swath of land on both sides while they're doing that maintenance or maybe there could be a spring and fall cleanup that helped us so that we didn't have to do the cleanup also and mow it. Um, creative thinking is what we're looking for and obviously some help. Um, and and not, not the, well, that's the way it's always been because maybe it doesn't need to always be that way anymore. Um, what else? Um, light pollution and that's primarily what's in and around town hall and some of the extra lights that are on that parking lot and how it's lit up a little bit for the center of town and maybe too much for you know a small town like we are so um, what can we do there to help out the homeowners in that particular area so what else folks what did i miss some suggestions that we talked about as far as slowing the traffic down Mm -hmm. talked about the suggestions we've seen other places or places that we've lived other other places that have been where it's worked out well mm -hmm. besides having a traffic control person there's several things you could do well, we talked about um, speed lumps not speed bumps and they're they're all over Northampton to slow down street traffic or placing one of those this is a crosswalk or crosswalks, but I think that's all part of what is being considered for in, in complete street. So you've got your thinking really outside the box there too, for all the same reasons, safety and convenience and all that stuff. Um, and that's also the whole sidewalk placement idea of what's going to happen there. So um, yeah, that's why we're here and we're hoping that, I don't know what happens now that we've sort of aired our concerns and asked for help, what, what then? How do we? So we have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Feedback. I, I, I saw this hand and then I. Then yeah. Uh, I'm Doug. Hi, everyone. Um, connected with what you were saying, I brought, do you want to pass that around? Pictures of the sidewalk in front of where I live, which is in the center of town, which is, it really upsets me that the town has let that sidewalk go that long. I've seen. In town, you have a lot of people retired, older folks. Maybe I'm, get, I'm getting there too. Trip, fall. Nothing ever gets done. But you find the money to do the town hall, and you can't spend a couple thousand dollars to do the sidewalk. And it also reflects, because I've gotten to really like Waitley. I have two side things with Waitley. That reflects on this town. 
that sidewalk. And the pictures, there's a million words there. And it's dangerous. And I don't understand why this town allows that to exist. Well, and and I, one more thing I want to say. I live in the center of town. Yeah. You should talk to me. I see things that no one else sees what goes on. I see it all the time. And I know I have to leave town because it's just getting to me. But what is the reason why that side, those side, that sidewalk is still looking like that? Waitley's not, go ahead. We're addressing that now. We found the money and that's going to be fixed. It's why, why is it taking so long? It's, it's not a couple of thousand dollars. It's $200,000 for just that small section of town. Okay. Two hundred thousand dollars. One small bathroom. Not just your front of your house. Right. It's not my house. The right. whole set of sidewalk around the center of town. So that's that's a lot of money in a town where they never want to raise the taxes. And I. Okay. Honestly, so when you say why it yeah. hasn't happened, yeah. that's why it hasn't happened. Okay. And when we did redid the town hall, it was pretty much without raising local taxes to do it. Okay, so I, you, you said why, and I'm telling okay, you okay. why. I, I You're in a that. town where people do I not know. want to raise the taxes very much. And you should know I'm not getting down on the town. Okay, good. But the reason why I get excited, because you don't see the people that fall and trip. You had a big event in the town hall a few weeks ago. They look yeah, like fine. really great people, and they tripped walking. There was no lights, and they tripped. And I know they were in their they were in their 80s, and so my my what I'm feeling I'm feeling for them. I'm doing this so someone doesn't fall and die, or you have a major lawsuit. But, that's but why I'm we're right, we're right. But it just seems like I, I've lived in town seven years, and it's maybe somebody could have went over to help you know like level it a little bit. But I'm just expressing not anger towards you guys at all. I'm expressing, I'm, I'm kind of like expressing the people that aren't here, that walk and trip and all, and that, that's all. And I, have, I hope I get time to say a few more things. I to say something. Two or three or maybe four years ago, there was a study done in a center of town, an environmental, I get one, I forget, called study, that looked at sidewalks, that looked at traffic, landscaping, drainage and all, done by the Conway School of Design. That was a study that was that was done for the town over I don't know one uh, over a year or a little longer and public input there was there was there was recommendations come out of that to this board and to other committees and and some of that was fed into the complete streets program what should be done yeah what should be done to improve sidewalks so it's not like we don't know the problem with sidewalks that they were never that they were ignored. It's been on our agenda for several years. It's just a matter of, of how do you address it and how does it coordinate with other projects going on in the center of town. That's not the only thing going on in the right. center of town. There's a veterans memorial being done, being remodeled, done uh, changes being made, landscaping changes being made, drainage changes being made. All this has to be coordinated and fit in to a plan. And that does not happen in one fiscal year, one year. It takes time. Did and you guys get different contractors, different prices? Four hundred thousand dollars seems like. Well, yes, we we have to advertise. If it's over a certain yeah, price yeah, level, yeah. we have to yeah. advertise. Anyway, you got a great town. Thank you, Donna. Um, Donna Wiley, one eighty four Chestnut Plain. Um, I haven't actually been part of the recent meetings, um, but Melissa was nice enough to share the results and. As Fred just said, what's really actually great is that the two main issues that came out of the many meetings we had when the Conway School was working were uh, for on the center of town were speeding and light pollution, and those are not nice. And, and I actually think, this is my main topic, the speeding has gotten worse. I mean, I'm older. <laughs> I don't move as fast. <laughs> but it, You're it, home it, more. It, it, and I'm home more, that's yeah, right, because I was yeah. working full time mm -hmm. then. And, um, it is really bad, and I, I want to make sure what, what, I, what no one has mentioned is the stop sign at Haydenville Road is doing nothing more than getting people to slow down into second gear. Mm -hmm. And they turn right, and those, it, it is, it's bad, <laughs> really dangerous. Um, but my main topic is the topic of light pollution. 
I, um, which as I said, came up a lot. It was the spring of 16, I think, when we had all of those meetings. Uh, the town hall is a new addition, but the lights on the side of the library are really bright. Yeah. They're on, I, they may be on all night, I'm not out at two o'clock in the morning. They're very bright. And I, I don't know why they're on unless there's an event at the library that evening. Um, and many, I mean, different private residents in the center of town have outside lights, some of which are really bright, some of which are left on all night long. I, I'm also not complaining, but I think if enough of us want to talk about light, it should be possible for the residents to have a conversation where we're literally talking about how bright can the bulbs be? How long are they going to be on? You know, what are we really using light for? Um, we have to talk to Chip Clock about that poll that he pays for, the Waverly Inn. Uh, He'd be happy to have that thing shut down. No, well, he's, well, he's paying, he pays for he pays all of them. Right, he pays a lot of money. Yeah, right? yeah. He wants yeah. them, though. Yeah. But I think he would, he would be happy with them. He'd be happy with Maybe, I just know that he pays for all of the ones on Jessup Lane. Right. Yeah. But I think he would be receptive to having the light a little well, or to having a conversation. So I guess I, I, I want to recommend two things about light. One is, if we can tolerate it, that we organize the meetings really to talk about what we think about lighting and what is needed and what is not. Um, and also, just to point out that one of my worries is that we didn't get all the money we asked for for the Complete Streets grant. We might get another, and we will improve and probably move some of the sidewalks from town hall to center to the center school and back that the north end but there's no money in the grant for lighting so we're going to have better dark sidewalks so we've kind of got a tough set of issues coming up we don't want we want less light but we don't want people falling in the dark so we're and and they're going to be more you know they're just we haven't solved this problem do we have a dark skies, you know, um, board 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 we don't. No. I think we, we don't. have to have the, like, down, the planning lighting. board wants lighting to be down, down. to keep the, uh, help with the skies, right. given we also <clears throat> have an observatory in the house there. If there's, there's limits on the activity after, what, 10 p.m. to 7 a.m.? For noise. For noise. For noise. And, and well, hopefully. I mean, I, I know when, when I walked home from the town meet from town meeting, it was really bright around town hall, obviously. But it was, and I don't, I personally don't care, but I know, I can understand a lot of people would very much care, but I, it did strike me as, wow, it's really dark. Yes. Uh, so it's that contrast just, so we have this list. Yeah. Naturally, a lot of it is taken up. I mean, I'm sympathetic to, to, to some of it. I mean, they they don't stop speeding once they leave Chestnut Plain Road. No, they get faster going down Swamp Road. I promise you. Um, you know, I've talked to these guys about having speed crevices or whatever. I don't know what you would call them. A lot of towns have. I would put them on Swamp Road personally. They go 60 miles an hour past my house. I think you got to be careful not to upset the truck drivers any more than well, air well, today. So be it. Right. I mean, you've got to trade off. You, 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 uh, but, but the speed limit is the speed limit. Right. 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 How you control right. it. Right. 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 And the speeding thing is really, really, really bad and really dangerous. A um, bunch of kids came through town once. If I didn't get out of the way, I was dead. They were going about 89 miles an hour in a van, screaming and yelling. What I kept telling the police, why don't you guys put in one of those, you know, it tells you the speed you're going, and if you're over the speed limit, it kind of, you know, do 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 do. But the speed bump thing, I don't know, the co-op did it in Northampton. It's kind of obnoxious to the people who live in town because it, it's not good for your car. And also, 
why can't the police be out there more often at peak driving times? But a lot of people are speeding through town, and we've spoken about that. It's 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 really dangerous out there. So, so what, there is some of that in complete streets, but it's in the subsequent years to put things on. Um, other roads uh, coming in and out of town, the uh, permanent, the, the a permanently installed uh, uh, speed monitor kind of thing. Right. Then, then we and it can be solar powered. And it's, but it's, it's just not in the first year. It's in subsequent years. Right. Yeah, because yeah. I think we asked for that from Furcog on one of their lists yeah. for technical projects, improvements, whatever. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that made it into the final complete streets. And I don't know which year it was, but it is in there as a, a request so, for streets other than the downtown, and the, the downtown is also included in that. Okay. Naturally, what we want to avoid is making this just an intellectual discussion with no action steps to follow up on them, because what good did it do us then? Um, I, I don't know that Perhaps each of these could be addressed. Perhaps some of them might not be addressed. I don't know at this point. I, didn't, I wasn't made Lord Protectorate, so I can't make the decision myself. But I, I do wonder whether there should be some kind of a, I, I hate to say a temporary committee of some kind, because volunteerism is so hard to begin with. Um, the other thing that I, I worry about is if things happen in the center of town, people will say, well, why can't it happen in other parts of town as well, and so the, the money does start to, you know, it's compounding at, at some level, and, and, if, and, and we can't treat one part of town different than another part. I will say, though, and I didn't realize this until I had a conversation with Brian, that the, the, the space between the road and the sidewalk is actually town common. I, I, didn't, I had no idea. I just thought it was a pretty little, large front yard. I mean, I, you know. Because if it was just front yard, well then, you know, you should cut my eight feet and, you know, and, and but it, just thinking outside the box, and again, we need to set something up constructively to move forward, but, and I don't know if you guys would like this or not, but if we were to view it as a town common yeah. and, and use it as an asset where you would have block parties and events that actually brought the town together and not confine it to just what is a relatively small footprint at town hall and 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 so utilize the asset because that's something i don't think our town does a good job of is utilizing our assets they're, they're nice assets but we don't utilize them i'm sorry and taking care of and take care of them right but if you're going to take care of it you have to see some level of a return what are we going to do with it um you know I, i'd love to do something like that where you really have I don't know, be creative, but. Yeah. We, I mean, I almost want to call it a park. But that's, you know, it's a common piece of land that all can enjoy. And right now, it doesn't look like a common piece of land. No, it doesn't. It looks like, that, your, it looks like your property. Yeah. yeah. So, and. Yeah. So, Neil, and then I'm going to, yeah. Neil Labor, 184 Chestnut Plain Road. Uh, I just wanted to comment on the, uh, the light pollution issue. Uh, with a suggestion that will perhaps provide pathways to doing bits and pieces of this, which uh, may be part of the answer is to try to address the things we can address and easily, and then to do the larger projects like the sidewalks uh, through the kinds of hearings that will be needed for that. Uh, the town hall backlight is on a motion sensor. So we can adjust how long it stays on, and we can adjust uh, how dark it has to be in the sky before it comes on, and then only traffic that drives up to the back entrance triggers that light. And we can play with that, we can adjust that, and if the immediate neighbors who are here say it's, it's, it's on too long, or it comes on in the middle of the day, well, turn, just adjust the controls. The front light, has a programmable timer that has to have the lights on and off at the same exact time, or various times, every day of the week. There is not a switch that turns on the front lights. And you can have users who come in, not only turn on the inside light, they turn on the outside light, turn it off when they leave. Of course, they might not, and then town constable have to come over and turn the lights off if, 
if the, the building is dark and the lights are on, but I have to go into the maintenance closet to reprogram that. And as the days get longer and shorter, I change the time that the light comes on. So it's coming on now at 7.30 and goes off at 9.15. That's sort of the best I can do because there are some evening meetings there that need the lights on. And unless someone has a key to the maintenance closet, the individual users can't turn them on. And so we may have one meeting a week in the evening that needs those lights. But I have to run them every day of the week. Uh, so uh, that little wiring change might fix it or put that on a combination of motion sensor and an internal switch. Uh, but that could be fixed. Maybe the same could happen for the library external lights. Why would the lights that really light up the pathway from the front of the library to the parking lot be on in the middle of the night? Uh, is that a switch that somebody forgot to turn off? Uh, but so, so little switch changes in those two sites and could I affect that. The subsidized part of that because they want to see it. If that's an energy efficiency right. initiative, and they may they may pay or subsidize for that cost. Um, I'm going to make I have a question, and then I'm going to make a suggestion. The the piece on the common would that Brian fall under the auspices of the very, very dormant open space committee? Or would that not be considered quote unquote open space? That's hard to say. I, I'm, I'm asking for interpretation. I, I don't know. I could say yes, but somebody would say no. Jonathan, I'm going to complicate the matter more. Well, since it is a defining feature of the historic district, and it's on a scenic road, um, I think it would have to fall, at least in part, under, I think the Historical Commission would have to have a voice. And, and Keith is trying, you know, to restore the double row of trees that was a defining feature. He just, we just had a public hearing about that two weeks ago. Um, so it's, it's a, a it, it is, a, there are probably a couple of different existing bodies that have a, a voice. I'm just trying to find a champion. So actually no, I understand you are. Yeah. I understand what you're doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. so, so the defunct open space committee might not be the best. All right, so <laughs> good. 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 Yeah, I, I, Fred wanted to say something, but I also know that Melissa wants to. I just and one go question. ahead, I'll let Melissa say yeah. it. Uh, the um, safety in crossing the road between the two main sidewalks in the center of town is in street in complete streets is there a plan to have crosswalks there so we don't really need to that may help slow people down with those crosswalk things and all that i believe there's, there's five, five, there's five, there's I believe there's five, five crosswalks going so in. that may help yeah. inherently they, yeah, 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 so we talked about okay. that as a okay. traffic compliment because okay. <laughs> you narrow the streets yeah. and you may or may not raise the the, the, the street, raise the sidewalk to effectively be sort yes, of the speed bump same. But you definitely narrow the street, and the narrowing is also something that is known to help uh, make okay. people slow down. All right, that's I, I think, um, remember, I think the, the five that were recommended by the Conway School were the same ones that we put into the complete streets application, and they are, I'm just going to go from, from go um, south to north, they are at the Congregational Church, two at the Haydenville Road Town Hall intersection, uh, across at the library by Howard and Pam's house and down by the center school and the cemetery. I mean, we could move, yes, you know, they could be shifted around after a public that's hearing, the basic but that was, that's what we were asking the money for. Okay. Rich, you were going to give your hand up. Yeah, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Rich, for yes, we have 15 and 19 state road lately. Um, I listened to your concerns. I was surprised to hear it, and it's kind of nice that you're bringing it up. The light pollution issue isn't just just a play around in other places. Route 5 is a huge issue with light pollution. I mean, I can make shadow puppets on my bedroom wall because of the issues associated with light pollution. And it may be appropriate to consider the fact that the zoning bylaws really need to have different considerations associated with both the residential and the commercial district to help protect the residential character of any household within the town. Because on Route 5, we have 10 households represented up to the exit. 
and we're all dealing with some issues with light pollution. And there are, because you can put up a security light and it can stay on all night long and it's very difficult to address the issues with zoning bylaws, it, it, having more teeth within, it, within the frame of that law would allow us a little bit more flexibility to be able to control it in not only the commercial district, but agricultural one, agricultural two. It will allow us some, you know, even just having um, reflective um, limits uh, may really help a great deal or more um, uh, wattages that are allowed because uh, you know, right now, if you, guys, if you go down by a muffins and you look at my house, I mean, it's, I got two trees that are dying in my neighbor's yard. I'm terrified they're gonna go down and I'm not gonna be able to sleep in that as it is. We got a blanket across the front windows and haven't taken it down since he's put up this light. Um, th there needs to be a little bit more consideration in the bylaws to protect any future development that comes down on in whether, regardless of where it is in town. Yes, sir. I don't yeah. Oh, thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Howard Nenner, 203 Chestnut Plain Road, uh, to identify the location even further diagonally across from the library going north. Uh, I want to call your attention uh, as a footnote to the relationship between the sidewalks and the traffic. Uh, somebody mentioned walking on the sidewalks at night when it's dark. I wouldn't walk on those sidewalks at night if they were floodlit. I walk from my house to the post office and back every day and uh, I'll confess I'm one of the rickety old people that was referred to earlier in his 80s and instead of risking most of the time walking on the sidewalk on either side of the street what I am obliged to do is to walk in the road because at least it gives me better footing so those two things I think are very closely related and I understand the financing problems. I just want to move the sidewalk issue a little notch higher in your consideration as you consider the fact that if these sidewalks are the responsibility of the town, you are really looking at a liability issue. Mm -hmm. What's the timing on, the, on this? Design will happen. We just signed a design contract with the engineer. Um, so I think the, the plan construction would probably start next. My, first my, thing next my best guess would be construction would be April of 2020. So and it's and, and at the moment our contract is saying it needs to be completed by June 30th of 2020 without that's at the moment without any extensions. Because of the financial but that's where that's where we're lining things up right now. Yes. I'd like to comment on the, the first year item here about the truck volumes and, and maybe addressing a, a question more so to, to Keith. Uh, if there's a way to either eliminate or restrict trucks on Christian Lane and Haydenville Road. You have to, to and, do a truck exclusion, you have to offer another yeah. alternative to for that. Right. And okay, I guarantee if you if you eliminate Christian right. Lane, yeah, you're gonna get an opposition be, from the Swamp Road. We're, we're dealing with the, the the biggest issue we have okay. with this area is the classification of the roads. Right. Um, Haydenville Road, Chestnut Plain from the Haydenville Road intersection to Christian Lane and Christian Lane down to Route 5 are classified as a major collector. Um, but they use Swamp Road, Keith. They, they still do, but at the moment, it's even though they're using Swamp Road, Christian Lane is still classified as a major collector. What does that mean? Um, it basically, it's a classification of the roads in all of Massachusetts as to their, their function. And major collector meaning it's collecting traffic and bringing it it's bringing it from the rural areas to a to a higher classification road. So in other words, a rural road bringing you to Route 5. Route 5 then takes you to Interstate 91. Those are the 
that's how you progress up and down the, the classifications of the roads. So as far as truck exclusions, um, we went through this quite a few years ago with um, the Pine Street residents. Um, and it, it really, in the case of like the Pine Street area just north of here, it's, it was not, nothing could be done because you have to, you have to provide an alternative method for them to travel. Um, you gotta remember that the, the roads when they are, when a truck driver registers his vehicle and pays for the diesel fuel that they're using, that, that is entitling them to use the, the roads in the town and, and throughout the country. And so it's, it becomes very difficult to limit to make limitations. Um, there is um, stringent criteria. It's cer certainly something we can look at a little bit more, but I do not believe that we would be able to have any way to say that no truck traffic can be. Now that doesn't mean that there might be methods for for the exhaust brakes, but the, the other side of the coin is the exhaust brakes become an issue with um, if you have a scenario where Exhaust brakes are prohibited, and then a trucker gets in an accident, and he and part of the reasoning why he was unable to use the equipment on his truck to stop his vehicle, uh, it's, it it opens up a lot of issues that really need to be thought out. I mean, the engine brakes are put on vehicles on these large trucks to efficiently help them stop, and if you tell them that they can't use it. And I, I don't completely agree with your, your comment that trucks can go anywhere. Uh, there is such a thing as a national truck network that specifies where trucks of basically any size can travel on certain highways. I'm sure, uh, I know this Mass Highway has that, Mass DOT, Burkhardt probably has it. And this is a maps, it's a road atlas basically for trucks where they can drive. And, and I don't know don't if, that, if that. Christian Lane and Haydenville Road is on that truck network. If it isn't on there, then we have some leverage to control what trucks go on that highway. I'm sure 5 and 10 probably is on the network because it's, it's a principal arterial probably. It's a higher functional class. And I think it, it may be worth looking at to see if that's on the truck network. There is alternate ways, you know, trucks are going to Williamsburg, I guess could say and beyond. I mean, you'd, yeah, you'd be forcing them to go to, to uh, Northampton, I guess, to go around, or Greenfield, I, I guess, or Deerfield to go around. So I, I think, uh, you know, there, there is that option to explore and see if we can control it by that. Does anybody know if that's just for this state? Um, I've lived in different states and yeah. rural areas and and in most states, um, di disregarding the fastest way to get someplace, they absolutely will not tolerate residential areas, especially historic residential areas, to have um, you know 16 wheelers going, 16 wheelers, um, and especially at a high speed. I mean, you just don't see it. Mm. It's just a, you know, it's just something that's not done in the whole state. Well, and again, it's it's all based on the classification of the roads. And, and but why is it classified that? Is it just because it's always been that way? Because of what, what that where that road is located and what it's what it's serving and what it needs to do. But these other places, they have the same problems, and they they just adjust by going around. Uh, it, it, that is that is a national network, it's, and each state is responsible for designating it, maintaining it, whatever. But it, it is something that every trucker is supposed to follow going from state to state now there is there is allowances to go off of that like if uh, say they want to go to yankee candle yeah you're not going to eliminate christian that part of christian lane if they have a destination within the town yes they're allowed to do that so far off the network but uh otherwise they're supposed to stay on that on that designated highway well and my guess is that a lot of these trucks do have local destinations. I mean, I know past my house, a lot of them are logging trucks. And Waitley is a 
blogging. But where are they coming? Where are they coming from? I mean, we know they're going. Edenville Road and well, Williamsburg. And Williamsburg, yeah. Well, we're, I see them go by by my place, but it's not. I don't know where anyway. they're starting from, but whatever. Okay. Can can we? I I think some of these items on the list, in my opinion, may need to be prioritized because I don't think we can address them all at once. Um, I'm a big believer that you prioritize things that will give you a quick win, and that gets momentum going. Um, and then you hit the next one, but if you prioritize the one that's going to take the longest, it's sometimes, it may be the most important, but it sometimes just drags everything down because no one's seeing any results, and they get bored, and they move on to the next next thing that, that, that's on the agenda. So, you know, I personally, I think, and. And, and Donna, you may kick yourself for saying this, that Historical Commission may be the perfect vehicle to drive the town common piece. I, well, we, and, and we, cause someone's we got were it. the ones who, who, who got the grant to engage the Conway School. I mean, right. there was then an ad hoc committee, and Keith and some other people in the room, I think, served on it. Uh, Larry Ashman was there for the library. I mean, we, but um, yeah, we could do that. I mean, I think I think what I, I think what we would want to do is expand and not have it be just the historical commission, even though a couple of us happen to live there. But right. we, but we've if you want, guys can we be the yeah, we can, we can we can <clears throat> do so, we can make a proposal. And it probably would yeah. be in conjunction with what's already planned, complete streets, so we're not yeah. duplicating. Yeah, although complete streets is is really other than the crosswalks we just talked about, it's only addressing the sidewalks for half of the historic. Like almost less than half, because part of Haydenville Road is in the historic district too, and, and nobody, nobody's here, I think, from Haydenville Road. But, but it's yeah. still part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. I'm splitting hairs. Um, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. No, 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 no. So, and we can't. I mean, it's we got to move on on our agenda. But um, I wonder if I could. Yes, please. If I could work with and have conversations with the relevant department heads for some of these issues and. and Really, what Neil had mentioned before is maybe there are there's short-term things, low-cost short-term things that we may be able to implement relatively quickly. We can identify what those are and the cost of those. I wonder how effective I've seen them in other neighborhoods. That say residential area, please don't use, please no engine braking. Um, I don't know if that would solve the problem. There's no enforcement on the back end. You're relying on the goodwill of people mm -hmm. to not do it. But I think, generally speaking, I think people may make an effort to, to maybe not use an engine brake if they don't have to. If they don't see a sign there, yeah. probably going to use it. And I think that would be relatively low cost. Um, I mean, if people are using their Jake Blake brake on Chestnut Plain Road, and again, I don't know the first thing about Jake brakes, but is it fair to assume that people are going at a pretty good clip to it's need to use? Right, so, so if they were to slow down, and I'll use my road as the, they're going fast on that road. Or, but yes, but the amount of energy you need to release is also proportional to the mass. Right. So you... I skipped a lot of physics <laughs> classes. So, 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 so yeah, so if, if a truck is really heavily loaded, then it would... You know, Regardless of speed. Um, well, the, the faster is still the more energy, but it wouldn't have to be as fast as you might think right. in order to still yeah. need okay. a very powerful brake. But, but that's happening at what the intersections mostly, right? And you build road one and, and you the curve around the school, yeah. basically, right. Those are the locations where the exhaust brakes would be right at the intersection of the end of the road for a truck coming yeah. to a stop and going into the curve by the center school. Right. Yeah, but they're using it past my house, Keith. I mean, there's no intersection. No, that, I'm talking about going down the yeah. Of course they're going to be using it going down the hill by your house. So, so I guess what I'm suggesting is that, and I don't know if there would be a representative of the group who would want to sit down those conversations with myself and, you know, the, the few department heads whose sort of jurisdiction this is, and then we could try to identify a list of Quick, fi not quick no. fixes, but just short, short term, term, low cost term things that we do immediately, and then try to identify larger items that are longer term. Longer term meaning most likely more expensive. Right. Um, I wonder if that's just a way forward. That's fine. It seems like a very practical first. Yeah. Step. If, if maybe if you could look at the list and just identify who would be the 
the, the person and share that with us, the, the person or committee, committee uh, department head or whomever, so we at least know who's going to be the, the champion of each of the items, long term or short term, and then we can. Right. Um, does, does the respective uh, select board liaison want to be involved? The yeah, that would be dependent on. Remember, those are going to change. Uh, those are going to change uh, pretty soon. So next you month, set yourself yeah. up. Lights are mentioned on 19 different pages of our bylaws. Just because I can okay. get it up. Yeah. Why don't you communicate with the different liaison? Okay. And we're, again, the three of us are going to okay. decide who's going to be the liaison starting the next meeting, anyway. So. Yes. Real, quick. Real, real fast. Yeah. Uh, the trucks go all night because I hear them all night. I wanted to say that, and I don't understand why you, the town doesn't try the speed thing because when the truckers come through, go, oh, you know, maybe it'll slow people down. And the other thing I wanted to say was on the sidewalks, maybe you guys could make a little sign so I see another young mother walking with the baby and the little kids tripping. We're going to be fixing the sidewalk for you. Something. I just want to say those two things really fast. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I'll be in touch. Okay. Uh, town election warrant to be signed. Right. So I guess I don't get my chance. On no, we're not. We're not, oh, we're done. not done. We got a long. We have a big agenda. agenda. The annual town election will be held June 11th. When you say not done, so that tonight we're done. No, no. My, our meeting is not very done, but our meeting is not done. We have different groups. No, we have a, a, a oh, yeah. longer agenda, so please be patient and have a seat. And yeah, thanks. Sorry. I want to yeah. give you guys a gift up here because you're all great. Here. Yes. Okay. We, we have to. No, okay. for you guys. Thank you. Because I'm here. Please have a seat. Thank you. June 11th. All right. All right. All right. <coughs> hey, can y'all take the, the conversations um, in the hallway if you could, please? Thank you. June 11th. 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Annual town election. Yes. Here's the warrant that we need your signature. Why are we doing it this year? I don't remember doing it before. Is that right. Which one? This warrant for other four years. You don't remember doing that? No. Every year you got to do it. Give that, I don't remember every like, Sunday. Uh, you know. should talk to your doctor about memory problems. I, mean, yeah, yeah. I was out of town. It wouldn't be the last year. I mean, well, this we, one, but yeah. before yeah. that, I don't ever remember. Right, there, there, are, there are tons of things that happen every year that I don't remember, so. <laughs> no. I remember signing these. I don't remember hiring Amy, and apparently it happened. Yeah. I'm just I don't lost either. because of it. Yeah. Brian did, I think. <laughs> didn't ask you guys. Yeah, yeah just get it. Just, well, she okay. keeps getting a paycheck, so she keeps coming. Uh, review plan, capital projects approved at the 4-30-19 annual town meeting. Yep, so there's a list in your packet uh, that sets forth the pro capital projects that were approved, the type of procurement that needs to happen, um, and put the law, then there's an alternative. We could do some of these purchases off statewide contracts. Mm -hmm. which are a little bit easier. Um, so I'll send this out um, to the relevant people who are going to be making these purchases, but this is a process that needs to be followed by state law. Um, okay. But the reason I'm bringing it up is because I just wanted to really um, get the okay from the board that all of these projects go forward. Um, they've gone through the ringer in yeah. terms of they've been approved by a town meeting, um, but I don't want to put anything out to bid that you think might or that we want to have discussions about um, and I know I think one of the ones that we may want to have a discussion about is the is he still here there he is I'm still here um, is the fire station um, we're getting rid of it well yeah <laughs> <laughs> um, tried that in Greenfield. It works well. <laughs> there were some there were some differences of opinion um, from the um, capital improvement planning committee as to right as to how that you recall that conversation as, to, as yes, to what should be done with the fire station um, the full amount was approved that would that would right. recite it or whatever we want to however we want to uh, term that um, but I just wanted to have the opportunity to have that conversation um, 
for that I, project. I did always have the feeling at those meetings that it wasn't really settled exactly what kind of repair would be done, but that some kind of repair was needed. Um, that there were people who strongly felt that just putting siding on top of what was there was not going to be appropriate and then doing that on four sides of the building when only one side was a problem but there were any number of discussions so I think it might be that we need to do a little work on that so that you know uh, I don't know that we'd ever get everyone to 100% agree but we, we might need to get a better consensus on what needs to happen there and I don't know who to start with uh, I don't know what the relevant committee would be well, to this, help determine that it might be that our new superintendent of buildings might be able to have some uh, say in the, what what process should we go through to figure out what's the right repair to make and may need hiring someone to make an assessment for us well, the, the capital this kind of started the capital improvement planning committee when requests came in Mm -hmm. okay, no but, but even and they were not they when at those meetings they were not sure that this was the exact right thing no. to do but that anything that would fix it would probably cost in the same range of money right yeah. and and yeah. and uh, the the thinking was to that there was a need to replace or cover all of the siding and since yeah. uh, that request came in, I, I guess various people have, uh, I've talked to and expressed concern to me that uh, there's no need to replace all of the siding. Replace. That, that's all we were talking about so far. There, there was no mention of, of fixing or, or repairing. It was replacing. And just looking, you know, you all know driving by two sides, there's nothing wrong with two sides of it the other two sides that need some repair and and to say they're going to be repaired it, it needs to be repaired to match all four sides to me it's not a valid argument because you don't see the other two sides anyway unless you walk around the building uh, and I don't think any thought so far I, I haven't heard anybody talk about repairing it getting a, a, a contractor to, to repair siding not to replace or or install new siding that's to me that's the only the only discussions that have been happening so far this is and the po uh, this is the poster child for how broken our system is uh, that that we're that we're we passed thirty one thousand yeah. dollars for because we know it needs to get fixed. Up maintenance of a town asset and there was no resolution on what should take place from what you guys are saying and this yeah, right. is why we did the, the building superintendent piece so that keith can be the person who herds the cats and we actually go to the capital planning committee and then the capital planning committee the capital planning committee comes to town meeting yeah, right. with a solid plan and actual steps that don't have to be revisited by whatever three people are sitting up here this is I, I agree yeah, with you. We were never in agreement. Yeah, there was, we're yeah. still not in agreement as to what needs to be done. Right. That something needs to be done is the only thing people agree right. on. Right. I would I would agree that we need that we need Keith because he's the building superintendent. I'm not trying to dump on you, Keith. No, but the point that I'll just intervene here is certainly since this project started before I and got in this yeah. with this title and sort of having right. more this responsibilities. But since then, I know one of the questions that people are commenting to me is, should we be siding over the existing siding? Is that creating a problem with vapor barriers and things of that nature? And one of the conversations I had with John was to speak to the building inspector. And uh, did you ever get? Did, and he said that there is no problem. With it. Okay, there so I mean, create, it does not create another vapor. Barrier. So that that's one of the one of the things that having our, our our own building inspector saying that what we want to do is not a bad idea if if he had gone to him and he said no you shouldn't do that well then that would have been one of the comments that we were hearing out there but obviously right. now that we're finding that out that the building inspector 
says that that project is a good idea. Good. Well, is, well, you're saying it's not it's not bad building. Correct, not bad. For that. Though yeah. certainly another aspect of doing it that way by studying it and is the sidewalls in that have virtually paper thin existing insulation. Going back in history, there used to be a point in time where after a snowstorm, we would worry that when you responded to a fire call you couldn't get into the building because the door would be covered in ice and if, as soon as the snowstorm would come down the roof would melt off and ice would just come down the sides of the building. The town spent money and got insulation on the at the ceiling level of the building and that solved that problem but we still have a huge amount of heat loss in the sidewalls because Again, you got to remember this was nothing more than like a, a garage. It's, a, it's, it's and so anything we can do in the aspect of improving some side insulation and tightening the sides up by some additional um, siding would be greatly helpful in, to that building also. Would that be under what we're passing to me, or would that be a stretch? <clears throat> that uh, I think it would. What's leaving that? that would be leaving the existing siding in place and then studying the outside and then putting additional another siding on top of that see and, and again this is my example of it, i don't believe it should be a conversation that takes place at yeah. this, this table right. or not it's, yeah. it, it, exactly it's, right it, it shouldn't have been right right and, and part part of what we need to get in place here is the process the with process is the department head is responsible for it. If the department head succeeds, we give them a good huzzah. If the department head fails, we say, hey, what happened? But that's why we have this process. The three of us, to varying degrees, have only limited skill sets in all of these areas. I know I don't have a skill set in knowing what siding to, to replace or right. right. At the same point in time, you look at the era of the building, 1968. Fast forward 50 years. Um, there's there's a life expectancy to step all these materials and that metal roofing as metal siding number one is obsolete you can't get you can't get matched to it anymore if you went to get matched excuse me Keith if you went to get matched for that you'd have to special order it well, and cut a, cut a seam in there it doesn't matter what are you matching the back sides that nobody sees all anything, anything anywhere needs to be repaired. Repaired. the front two matched. sides do not need to be repaired What's two? The front two sides, it's a visible, do not need replacement. The front side. The, the door side. And oh, yeah, it absolutely does. No, it doesn't. Okay. Well, and, and talking about the process, Jonathan, I understand that, you know, we've got Keith involved now in helping us decide on, on the maintenance of the buildings and what needs to be uh, maintained. Uh, but we also, we also got the process of the Capital Improvement Planning Committee that's supposed to be looking at all the buildings and prioritizing the needs. Uh, and I guess Keith needs his, his, he needs the input into that committee. I, I don't see Keith coming in now and saying, okay, this is what should be done with this building when the other committees have not really agreed to that. Finance hasn't agreed to this either. They both didn't of course they this. did. No, they didn't. Finance didn't support this. Uh, really? So, yes. So now, it, at the last minute, we're, we're get of course they did. arguing Finance. about this. But, uh, but I but guess we're, we're, we're not following the process that we're trying to set up here. And, and, and forgive me for, for, for missing something, I guess, but had I known that the Capital Planning Committee was and i don't want to i'm going to say it even though i don't mean it to sound as critical as it is was partially running blind on if there are needs if there are differences of opinion then i'm not sure i would have supported it either but we we appropriated thirty one thousand dollars we now have a building superintendent whose job it is to assess needs based upon the very broad definition of side replacement if he feels that the that that the and and again the capital planning committee approved simply what was requested of them 
if the, the requesting authority, the highway, or the, I'm sorry, the fire department, now says we can do it as well, but less expensively, and the building superintendent is, is with, up, with us on this, why wouldn't we do it more efficient rather than just sticking to, well, that's what we passed. We have a better system now. Let's use the system that we adopted. That's what I'm arguing with you about. We need to look at that, use that system. Right, so let's let keep the job. Arguing. It sounds well, like we all agree. Let's no, keep because the, the, everybody involved in the system doesn't agree up until now come final decision. Yeah, but, but Keith is the guy that we hired as the professional on it. Nobody is that our responsibility? Is that what we said his responsibilities would be? Yes. To give final yes. approval on what building no. maintenance need to be done? He, he's meeting his final To approval. make the well, assessment. Well, to make the assessment. Well, he can make the assessment and we say yes. Goes back. Town meeting is your, is your final. Right, but well, and he wasn't involved in this process because we didn't do that until after the committee involved. committee made the recommendations. Yeah, he came in to. Came in afterwards, later. so uh, I, I so, guess in the future, probably, he probably should be involved absolutely. during early discussions. Yes. But, mm -hmm. And I will say this much that this year, the capital planning was this is the first time that the capital planning actually came out and made site visits right so i feel we're making strides right that has gotten much better i even heard um for instance the um, the school superintendent at a at a frontier committee meeting make a comment how he was impressed that the wait lease um the capital planning committee came and visited the elementary school he says that doesn't happen in the other communities they came and they listened they they are interested so we're making strides in that aspect right. that and, and then i hope you are on those site visits each one of them in subsequent years. Yeah, that's, that's right that's right right i'm coming into that and yes right. i will need to be at those right. because the capital planning yes. committee may they the members of the committee now may have all those skills May they may not. I don't know. But in ten years, they may or may not Change a different game. cast of characters. So let's utilize the right. skill that we have, and let him figure out this so we he, he can do it. Yeah. I guess I, I would like to see a, a report come from from, from Keith. I guess and what should be done here for this item. I, I, I we talked that's about nice. various uh, various ways of repairing it, fixing it, and so <laughs> whatever. I guess before we. We spend any money on this. I'd like to see something from from Keith telling his board what he feels should be done with a recommendation. Yeah, good, good recommendation. Yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Good. All right. We we'll just give you the money. <laughs> the, the other the other item on, on here. Input fires. The I guess came under fire and and finance didn't approve it because they didn't get the details really until the end was the historic safe restoration for ten thousand uh, dollars I guess uh, a town meeting passed right uh, but there was some discussion about what actually was going to be done whether all of that was going to be done up to the ten thousand or not because there was really two options one was to I guess restore the, the inside of the safe and the second one was inside and outside of the safe and I, I don't know which way they're going on that recommendation. I suspect it would depend. I, I mean, the, they need to put, so Donna's put it together a written scope of work as to what they would like done. Right. And then they'll, it'll, they'll put it out for, um, for, they'll put it out to receive three quotes as required by law. And, and they can see what they can do with what they can do with, with, with money. Okay, so that's different than what she's submitted so far. Then. What I think she oh, has question. one. You mean what she received back from uh, the uh, a company the who one does? Company, yeah, right. Um, <coughs> presumably, that company would be one who would um, submit a price quote, where they would solicit a price right, quote okay. from. But they're required to solicit three price quotes. Okay, so we're still working to get that. Yeah, yeah. that's three part of the, quotes, That's okay. part of the procurement process. All right. And that's the they'll that's and it, their jurisdiction to do it the right way. And if they cut, if all three of them come over ten three, then they're back to the drawing board. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So with the so for the fire station siding, you want gluten for um, an opinion yeah. from Keith. Yeah. Everything yeah. else. Yeah. Everything else will okay move forward. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Just a uh, question, uh, Keith. Are, are you still planning on painting the, the highway garage? Yes. You have money and. What part of your budget for that? We changed the language in the article that was approved for the change <coughs> shingling of the highway department. Mm -hmm. I had excess money left over in that. Oh, so okay. we changed the language in that at, at a special town meeting to allow for that purchase. So I have the funds for that. That will be happening this summer. Okay, I'm just, just curious. As well. We'll be What's making some out? minor minor repairs to the concrete blocks in some spots okay. prior to the paint. But the last time that was painted is about 20, probably five years, 25 years ago. Are you guys gonna do that or? Yes. Okay. okay. Chapter 90. I have a project, project request for chapter 90. Um, the work that's going to be taking place fairly soon. Um, chip ceiling, um, North Street, Chestnut Plain, and also, I should call it these eight signatures, and also on um, River Road from the intersection of, um, River Road from the intersection of Christian Lane to Straits Road that is going to get a rubber um, rubber chip seal, which is a much higher, um, it's definitely is designed to withstand higher traffic counts versus some of the chip seals that we do on the on our secondary roads. Are those getting high traffic counts these days? Is that, is like, that section? Like, yeah, the river road, the, the rubber chip seal that I'll be doing on River Road Christian Lane from the intersection of River Road to Long Plain Road and then two sections on Long Plain Road which are from the intersection of Sandy Lane up to the Deerfield Town Line and then it, from Michkowski Circle to, um, to Christian Lane. That rubberized material is um, goes down, it gets all swept up immediately immediately there's no loose stone left on it. Um, it it's something that we need to do to um, to pres preserve those condition the, the road conditions so that they don't continue to deteriorate if we don't do anything like that anything in the interim like that then I'm struck then I have no other means other than to do a full repavement and the cost for doing an overlay is about $7.50 a square yard right now versus um, in the $4.50 range. So um, it is it is definitely um, the best method that I have for preserving. When was the last time the Chestnut Plain Road was done? What's that? When was the last time Chestnut Plain Road was done? Our, our, our secondary roads with the chip seal are done every six to seven, seven years. Um, and the, 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 that's called conventional chip sealing and basically um, it, in a sense it's the same method as if you have a, um, your own paved driveway and you need to go out and, and reseal it with the, like when you see people do it with the five gallon buckets, that's basically what a conventional chip sealing is doing. However, we can't put up the we can't close off the road like people close their driveways off and park on the lawn for it to cure down. So you need to put something on it immediately so that the vehicles can travel over right away. And that's why you put on a, a wearing surface, the chips. Okay. So the rubberized can be longer? The rubberized is going to be, number one, it'll be, um, it puts down um, double the amount of asphalt that would be done on a, um, on a conventional chip seal, and again with the rubber that's that's um, embedded within it, it also will give it a much 
a longer. But again, it's it's a scenario where um, we're dealing with higher, much higher volumes. Um, so the wearing surface needs to have a higher performance. Um, this is I've been watching this in some of the neighboring towns. Um, that especially in Hadley's done it on um, Route 47. Sunderland's done it on Route 47. There's been a lot of um, places where this is, you know, is having good results. So does this mean you don't have to crack seal? If you do um, right? this, well, or you still uh, have at to? this point in time, I, I wouldn't e expect we would be needing to do anything to them for probably another eight to ten years hmm. on those. Those oh, so, okay, but you're not. If you crack seal these locations already? Yeah, yes, they've already been crack sealed all once already. Okay. All right. Have you so I have a, I and, and as far as my chapter 90 goes, um, these uh, these requests that I'm putting in right now are used, you know, still utilizing FY19's um, mm -hmm. allotment. I'm slated for our FY20 allotment and that will still be going forward. I haven't put any project who has requested for that. The one thing that we have looming is um, the paving of Poplar Hill Road. Um, everything seems to be moving forward and fine with that. I anticipate um, worst case scenario was we would have to use chapter 90 money for that. However, it seems pretty um, safe to say that Smith will be taking care of of every, everything for that. So um, going forward, I, I'm still going to be retaining a, a, a lot of Chapter 90 because we're certainly uncertain with if we're going to have any cost overruns with the complete streets, if I'm going to have any cost overruns with the Williamsburg Road. Um, so I don't want to, I'm trying to be very cautious because I have these other projects that may need some chapter 90. On the Poplar Hill one, uh, I understand that what Smith College is, is paying for that. Did you have some kind of agreement that they agreed to do that? Um, to we have had you know, multiple meetings and... Have them writing to say they're going to do that so we don't no, get shortchanged? Not yet. Have. Well, it's, 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 been, it's been part of the conversations. There, there's nothing been, in writing now. There's, well, there's yeah. nothing in writing, there's nothing that commits the town to paving, so oh, okay. it's... Yeah. But it'll be fine. Yeah. Right. Just, uh, just, well, it'll, we'll get, we'll get it tightened up. There's verbal commitments. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have a highly technical question. The sheets that only have one line, it's just You're going to have to... Does the chair just sign that one, just or does all three of us squeeze go, Somebody in? can go down, you got to put them in there. Oh, okay. That's all right. their forms that they have. All right. Williamsburg Road get through Williamsburg uh, get through Chapter 85 review. Williamsburg Road status, I can update you there. Um, we still do not have complete Chapter 85 review, which Chapter 85 review is meaning that Mass DOT re reviews the plans and makes comments before it can go out to bid. It's very frustrating because back in January we were expecting this to be completed in March April at the latest and we would be going out to bid in April here we are basically June 1st I still don't have chapter 85 review out of mass DOT so uh, other than I continue to contact our engineering engineer on it and ask for updates and they give me the best they can. Um, uh, it's bureaucracy and I'm frustrated. So, so I highly doubt that any construction, if by the time we get this bid this year and a contractor is awarded, it then becomes in their, you know, their case as far as when they can schedule it to be done. I highly doubt that any contractor that would be out there looking for work is, has no work where they could start the very next day. So realistically, I would say we're looking at spring of 2020 for, for construction, which means another winter if it being closed. 
and the resident that we have that lives on the other side continues to have to drive all the way around for his services and does that so that's where that stands um and he's aware of the schedule i i saw yeah i just actually saw him not too long ago and told him okay that, is that something richard the the person i spoke with richard massey is that something he's or is this in boston no this is in boston this the chapter 85 review is even is mean being done at a local level Haydenville Road. Haydenville Road, we have a meeting tomorrow to try to um, just go over some a few things and also discuss, you know, where are our, our funding being with Franklin County and the Franklin County Planning Commission versus um, Hampshire County, which is part of the Pioneer Valley, which serves Hampshire and Hamden County. We're trying to um, stop the games that are being played in regards to our funding keep being pushed down the line franklin county is saying well the fact that blainsburg's hasn't even been put on the on their on that tip yet they keep pushing us down so there's games that are being played on that brian can elaborate a little bit he went to a meeting yesterday um, as far as the design i got serious issues with the design that's that's sitting at 25%. Um, I've started to make some of the comments. I need to finish my comments on it and get them submitted to Boston. But basically, they're just doing a Band-Aid. It's, in my mind, they should be, this should be a project where we're making an investment that's going to be taking this section of road forward for the next it really isn't doing anything about bicycles. It's leaving it all at 24 feet of pavement. Um, and in, even in our section, all they want to do is um, uh, um, their, their wording in the plans is to micro mill it and overlay it. From day one, our intent was full depth re reconstruction. It, it's, it, I, they're not even replacing, hardly addressing any drainage issues. They weren't going to address any of the intersections of Strip, um, strip Road or, or Weber Road because of property constraints, which I can understand that. You know, it's wetland issues in there. There's, there's the beavers that are, it's, it, there's a lot of environmental nightmares associated with this project also, but they're not even attempting to. So who's they when you, when you reference that? The, Right at the moment, it, it would be the, the designer who Mass DOT has contracted a de designer to do, a private contractor. I don't know if they have been given, and this is what I, we need to find out, if they have been given any guidance from the state. But certainly at the local level, talking with um, Rich Massey, he's uh, agreeing with me that this isn't what we so we need to really figure out what's going on. We got a meeting tomorrow. I don't know if you, what more you want to elaborate, other than we need to think, get things straightened out. Yeah, I'll, I'll elaborate on two things. Uh, the first one, the meeting tomorrow, we arranged a meeting with um, Burkhag, Williamsburg, myself and Keith, and PBPC to try to straighten out the, uh, each project in order to be eligible for federal funds to be list, listed on a transportation improvement plan for each planning organization. There's a Franklin yeah. TPO, Transportation Planning Organization, and Pioneer Valley MPO, Metropolitan Planning Organization. Um, so I think what the intent was is that we're gonna line up these projects. So those, those are five-year plans, they project out construction funding for those different, for those geographic areas. So we're gonna try to line up so that the Whateley project was funded in FY, whatever, 20, 2025, and the Williamsburg portion was listed in the Pioneer Valley for uh, 2025. Um, it's never been listed in the, 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 the tip for the Pioneer Valley, so that's an issue that we need to address. Um, projects are eligible to be listed on the tip once they reach 25% design, which this project has reached, so it's time to get it on the tip. Um, so that's what that discussion is uh, tomorrow. 
it, it's really to identify next steps as to how we how we move this forward, yeah. which will likely involve contacting our reps and involve a master DOT and having a bigger meeting about where this project is and what we want to see happen. And the, the meeting that I attended um, yesterday was a meeting of the, the Franklin uh, TPO, and they were voting on their their uh, 20, 2020, 2025, I think, five -year plan. the five-year plan uh, for the Franklin. And the Whaley Project, we had word that there was an amendment made at their last meeting that the Whaley Project was removed from the TIP um, and replaced with a project from Greenfield. And so what happens is a lot of political games get played in these uh, planning organizations. Um, so I went yesterday and they expressed hopefully our shared displeasure that that happened in our uh, support for the project um, so um, we were assured that um, well it's on the way to was still so I guess I wasn't that persuasive but um, that it's still a high priority project um, and I guess in one sense it helps that mass DOT is is doing the design um, because they can move the project forward as quickly or as as slowly as, as, as they want to. Um, what was the project in Greenfield that? Wisdom Way. I'm sorry? Wisdom Way in Greenfield. Help me out there. That's kind of a sorry looking road right now. It's like off to Wisdom Way. Is that going um, up to the fairgrounds? It goes up to the fairgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, fairgrounds. Where the landslide is. Well, who's the, the, the rep for the, the, the Franklin County planning is, for our region, is it Deerfield? So, administrator was the rep, is that? Right, so so right now there's a vacancy, so I think there's east, west, central. Right. No, um, it's it's southwest, east. Whatever, yeah. I think we're central. I feel like there was a central rep. Okay. okay. Well, which, there's three. Which used to be yours truly. It was me, yeah. and then it was... And then it went to Wendy. 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 Um, and since Wendy has left Deerfield, that position has remained vacant, so we had zero representation at no, any of those meetings. Cool. So. Got and those meetings, like, by the way, the are convenient at well. like one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, they they provided lunch. So that was nice. Well, okay. Yeah, I didn't have an appetite because <laughs> most happened. people's employers don't, you know, say, "Oh, well, you have lunch out," and then by all means, take a couple hours. But who decides that the rest for the for the week for the week, the areas that the, the select board association does? Yeah, I believe it's the select board association that needs to appoint. I believe appoint oh. temporarily Brian representative. Oh, okay. Well, I just represented the uh, okay. the town's interest. What's the next meeting of that, do we know? Um, no. If you can find out, I'm happy to put it on my calendar at this point. Okay. Um, so, so just something very quickly related to that. Um, Mass I'll talk about MassWorks. Um, Mass DOT has out for comment right now, it's, it's CIP, it's Capital Improvement Plan for the next five years. Um, I spoke with, with Rich Massey after the meeting and he suggested that um, the town provide comments to Mass DOT on that capital improvement plan suggesting that or stating that the continued design of this project is very important to the town. Um, and I'll yeah. suggest that we contact Natalie Blaze and Joe Comerford as well and ask uh -huh. them to write those same comments. Which really means you will write them. This pretty much, yeah. I would say, please post this on the website. And what we got to remember here is the the funding that we're working with was originally secured in a transportation bond that Steve Kulik, Representative Kulik, had the driving force to get included. So, because it's in a transportation bond, the administration of Transportation administration gets to decide what happens with it. It sat there for the longest time, nothing, fine, nothing happened, and finally we were able to get them <coughs> to release. I think the the bond, the language was 5.6 million dollars. It's technically sitting there on paper to be spent. The administration is only a, allowed the amount of money to be spent to to do the design, but that doesn't mean that if we don't keep pushing, like Brian is saying, that the administration will, will keep pushing that design to 100%. It could, they, could sell, they could say, 
leave it at 25 for a couple of years. We've got other things to do. Right. So we need to keep pushing. Right. And if, it, if there's comments, it makes it a lot easier to make the case. The it's governor can release it whenever he wants. Correct. The point is that if there's yeah. if there's no push pressure. from the town, then yeah. Mass DOT is not going to push it, I think is what. And I would say you said the strongest terms that are allowable by the FCC. In, in theory, <laughs> that 5.6 million could be spent towards construction. The language was in there. But at the moment, they're trying to just go through the process of using the TIF, pro TIF process so that the bond that we had, that language will only, that 5.6 million will only be, only be required to be spent for the design and the rest will just sit there forever. It'll go to MBTA. Yeah, I, I, I looked at that, the at that 85 page document and I didn't see it listed anywhere in there, unless I missed it. But it is very, it is rather lengthy if you want to look at the whole thing and try to find it. Yeah, what was Act of 2014 then? Right. Yep. That's how long that was. Is that, that's probably cost at that date, right? So you could, it's costs haven't have have escalated since Oh then. yeah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mass works. It'd be, yeah. Be remiss in, if not noting the irony in that the first half of our meeting was about how to get trucks to slow down on Haydenville Road coming into town. And now we improve the road, it'll make it easier for trucks to come in when high speeds coming into town. That we really <laughs> We've got more truck traffic. It really is a balance because we, we need the trucks, we need the commerce, we need the, the business activity to be happening. Right, but we also need to live here. We think it's sort of a microcosm of, uh, of all the conflicts that we have to deal with um, in, in all the stuff we're doing. This meeting tomorrow, why is Northampton involved? Because we, we all decided a long time ago that Northampton's involvement would move things along because yeah. they are um, this more is, powerful. This is really a preliminary meeting to get uh, this back on people's radar. Right, the funding has. We, we planning, expect this will lead to a larger meeting with okay. all of the people, Loisberg, uh, Whaley, the Planning Commission's Mass DOT and our political and our reps. Right, but, but Northampton, because, because and North the, the reason this was pushed originally, this is years ago now, yeah. is because the reservoir is there. Yeah. And Northampton wanted, needs to protect the reservoir. Correct. Yep. And so they need to be at this table and they need to be reminded your water supply is at risk because the first truck that goes into your reservoir. That's good night, it. Irene. Right. So we will we will make sure that they're that they are making comments on that twenty five percent side. Definitely. Okay. okay. Mass Works. Twenty nineteen yes. Mass Works program is open. Yes. Uh, applications are due August 9th. Uh, so we'll be making an application. I, I don't know. I just so wanted to bring it to, to our attention that I don't know if you've had any experience with mass work grants. It's a, what the lift is to get an application. It's, it's a pretty heavy lift. It's been reconfigured in recent years. I mean, it used to be like strap grants, um, PWEDs, and now they re renamed it to mass works grants and. I think they've also expanded. I don't know if you have the criteria there or not, but it, it's pretty broad right now. Yeah. Yeah, it's essentially any type of infrastructure, hard infrastructure. So do you have a recommendation as to what we're going to apply for? Well, I wasn't, when I originally saw it, I wasn't sure if this would be something that could, and I'm not sure that the timing would be something that we want, but if it could pay for the improvements of the for the water system, um, but I don't know. It probably could, but the timing is. Good. Yeah, I'm worried about the timing. Yeah, it's this isn't this is another one of those things where you start it and you're looking at five years down the road type of maybe not quite that much, but it's not going to be something that you start today and. Do, so the, do you're saying the turnaround of this is. You won't get the money for five years. Because it's a very competitive, very competitive. It is a competitive. 
it's yeah. you're competing against everybody else in the state of Massachusetts. Right. So does, it, does it say when they were going to award the projects? Here it just says the deadline day for submittal. The deadline's August 9th. I, yeah. I thought I saw somewhere December. But, but you December. know, in, in relation to, to the water merger, I mean, if there were good dates, they may not be that far off. We certainly could pick up on additional things in the complete streets. Uh -huh. um, things that were further down the line. Yeah. Should that be one place to look? And they're talking about sustainable development. It seems to be the the buzz. Not I. I mean, I, I believe in sustainable development, but that seems to be the buzzword of the. But it appears on many, many of the pages here. I don't know what the criteria are for uh, for a project to be considered sustainable development. Yeah, but it does seem have, it's going to have to have a lot of economic. Yeah. Yeah. Economic impact. So, exactly. so the three bridges in West Way Lane probably not. Right. Yeah. With, with the uh, inter competitive. intersection at Christian Lane, and that would five. be that would something that could certainly be um, possibility. But again, that's the, the unique thing about that is it's like. We're dealing primarily with the fact that it's Route 5, that it right. takes it into the state's hands. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that it, it can't, but it's not something that, that we can apply for because it's not <coughs> our, It's pretty much there. It's got to be a state. Right. Well, other than our improvements on Christian Lane, no way. It's unique in the aspect, right, that we have a town road intersecting with a state road, but well, we, we gotta get them on board to begin with. Yeah. yeah. We need to be on the same page as we want that to be point too. Yeah. We're not anywhere close to that. So yeah. Fred it says awards are announced on a rolling basis starting in October for projects to begin construction the following spring. And when's the deadline again? I'm sorry, I missed that. August. 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 That's that they well I think I'd be surprised if the, if the turnaround was that quick personally. Right. I think it would be. I, I'm not sure that the timing matches up for for what we want to do. Well, let's take a let's. I'll take a look at it. I don't mind. Take a look. Yeah. See what kind of creativity comes to mind. Um, castaways. All right. Let's switch gears. So I wanted to refresh our memories as to, right. or memories or nightmares, I don't know which one I should be saying, but yeah. and I see Susan stuck around, so we can't relive it with us. It was not a fun chapter. Uh, um, Zoe, of course in your packet, right, they have a notice, notice of yes. decision. Yeah. Here, yeah. That's the a little that Well, so that's the notice of decision for the uh, that's the notice of decision from the ABCC in terms of uh, oh. the approval of the liquor license transfer. Right, and there was another one uh, um, on the other email. Yeah. So what we have to do, and I haven't, I reached out to um, both parties to see when the sale was going to. When and if the sale was going to actually yeah. take place, um, and I've had town council draft up notice of decisions, which uh, which the board should sign. Um, so we sign could, now or sign at well, appropriate time. So we could sign now, or we could hold them in. We have the we have to sign the licenses and notice of decision. Notice of decision is just a summary of of the of the hearing process and the conditions that the board opposed imposed on the license on the alcohol license and the entertainment license mm -hmm. um I, I don't know that there's a rush that we sign these tonight um, but if the sale does go through we have i just want to refresh our memory as to um, what we are, what the board is requiring um, we're requiring some uh, some construction at the back of the building in terms of that break area um, a masonry wall uh, and a stockade fence along the, I don't know, is that the east side, east side of the side. property? 
uh, we're requiring that that those be completed within I think it was 60 days 90 I thought but maybe 60 um, it says 60, yeah. 60 okay. um, and then there's some other um, some other modifications here that that, that the board requested yeah. in terms of there some four month ones as well. yeah um, knocking off some of those parking spaces which I think the existing one has done I think which everybody appreciates because it makes the intersection a little safer So, and then there's the conditions that the board imposed on the variance from the police detail, and that's, um, those would come into effect um, if the sale were to happen. Um, and again, that's a, that's a police detail for four months, four month probationary period, um, Thursday, 9.30 to 9.30 to 1.30, Friday, 9.30 to 1.30, Saturday, 9.30 to 1.30. One hour, be, one hour before, during, and after a special event. And um, I think you see that if a detail officer is unavailable, then the licensee shall have um, two security personnel. Um, so it's going to take a lot of coordination with um, the chief of police um, to schedule those details. I, I, I um, let him know that the license had been transferred. Um, so I put him on notice that there may be some scheduling that needs to happen. During this four-month period, um, we're requiring the, um, well, I guess the board is committed to reviewing um, the operations It's at, during its second monthly meeting of every month, which would um, require a report from our chief of police yep. um, to discuss. And then at the end of the four-month period, the select board would meet and decide whether whether to continue the variance in its current form, grant a new variance with or without conditions, reduce the variance, eliminate whatever you want to do. Um, there's a requirement that the director of security meet with the way the chief of police on a weekly basis as well. And that would inform, hopefully, the report that the board receives. So what needs to happen first, the sale to go through or for us to sign this uh, notice of decision? Um, well, the sale the, the sale needs to happen first before um, these license we want to issue these licenses because we would want right you have to issue to the existing we would want the applicant to own the property right and have control of the property right. um, and so we don't want so the start so, so the thing just don't happen right so we don't need one or no obligation to sign it tonight, okay. um, until they. Yeah, I, I think until would. they get back in touch with me and say, hey, we are looking for our licenses to be issued, then I'll say, okay, the board will be on June 12th. Let's have a discussion because we'll review these conditions with you at that meeting. Um, I think that would be uh, a wise thing to do. So we refresh everybody's memory. So will, will we actually see the, the sale agreement? Um, I have copies of, of the, the sale agreement was submitted with the uh, liquor license transfer the application. Oh, okay. It was an asset, there was an uh, that, asset not purchase just, agreement, and I think there was a purchase and sale as well. It's not signed, though, that was just, was that a signed agreement, or was that? Um, I, I believe it was signed. I was waiting for the license transfer. I think the, the, the agreement's written in such a manner that it's contingent on um, the issuance of the licenses by the top. Okay. okay, so let's put that off and let's plot forward. Um, 10 minutes updates. Uh, we talked about complete streets. I'm told there's going to there's gonna be a solar forum on yes. um, June 17th. Do you want to put yeah, the I'm working on the agenda right now. Uh, the plan is to get everybody get to start sending out invitations on Friday once we've got the uh, speakers. It's about um, who's hosting this. We are. Time to wait. I, I I stood up and said I'll do it. I've got a little time now uh, between teaching in July and teaching just finished. Um, no, it, just recently scheduled. It's it's like this is within the last week. July um, for. Um, so there's uh, a new, newly available way to fund municipal solar. 
um, and it's being used already for nonprofits. It's been used in one municipality in uh, New York, in New York City, in fact. Um, and we want to find out um, if this is something we can do kind of bigger, better, and, and to benefit the town and communities in Western Massachusetts. So we'll have one speaker who's experienced with this particular kind of financing model. The main thing for municipalities, of course, is that you don't have tax credits that you can take advantage of. I mean, you get the tax credits, but we don't pay taxes. So they don't do us any good. Um, so uh, the fine, I've got a small write-up about it. I can email you if you want, or I guess I email Brian and he can email to you. Um, uh, that they've uh, figured out um, a way to uh, use those give the tax credits to people who can use them, and in return they finance the upfront costs for solar arrays for nonprofits and municipalities and groups that can't take advantage of the tax credits. Um, there are still some issues to be worked out. Um, and I think to me that the most obvious one is, well, you need to write up an RFP that kind of protects the town and protects, um, you know, the people who are working on it because at the beginning there'll be some shared risk and you have to sort out how are you going to share that risk um, and then you need an eventual end date to it at a point at which the solar facility is sold back to the town basically for some small fraction of the cost so um, that's uh, we, so we have people who will present on that people who will present on um, some other more nuts and bolts things about um, siting solar behind the meter or at a standalone meter um, and what are the advantages and disadvantages of those so that um, towns can kind of help kind of sort out well where in our town does it make the most sense to put solar to be at our best advantage for example and i don't know the answer for Wadley necessarily but one of our big electricity users is the uh, the pumps the pump station the water department. Um, so that would be a place where behind the meter is probably a better place to put solar. But uh, our school, not a great place to put behind the meter because uh, most of the energy comes during the time when the school is out of session. So there's a lot of, uh, there, so there's someone's going to talk about those kinds of issues so that towns can think about what I'd say predominantly town owned land, though it wouldn't have to be town owned land. Uh, you might want to put up a kind of a municipal array. Um, and starting just January, Massachusetts uh, has started uh, considering uh, incentives for storage, um, especially in conjunction with things like wind and solar where it's not a constant energy source. Um, and that, there's not a lot known about it, but we've located uh, somebody who does know a lot about it. He's agreed uh, to come and talk about that kind of in the context of uh, what kind of, uh, you know, where might municipalities and nonprofits sit in this, um, you know, the, the new, I don't know, I don't even know, to the point of regulations, but in this new way of looking at uh, storage is something that the state wants to incentivize. Um, and it, I read a little bit of it, it seemed really complicated. Um, we want to have people from kind of all kinds of small towns, big towns, um, up and down by the planning agencies in Pioneer Valley, uh, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission and FERCOG are already interested. Um, so folks from UMass Clean Energy Extension, they're interested in. So people from Worcester, from an energy cooperative there, are interested. Uh, our energy committee, I think, will be interested. Um, and basically, I want to alert all, all towns up and down Pioneer Valley that this is going to happen, send somebody so that you can learn about this and maybe see what you can do to apply it um, in your own towns. Cool. So, so I'm, I'm excited about that. What's the date again now? The 17th oh. of June. June. June 17th. What kind of date is that? Um, Monday? That's a Monday. Monday. This will be like the best Monday in all of June as far as I can tell. Um, so depending on RSVP, we'll try to have, I think, <laughs> We'll probably get enough people to fill this room. Um, if we got many, many more, we might have to use the upstairs of town hall. Um, but I won't know until I start making the invitations more wide 
you know, spread that widely and start collecting RSVPs from people. Um, cool. Yeah. Brian, anything else? A couple, else? couple other things. Yeah. Um, last night, the planning board approved the site plan for the um, the um, the Mustang uh, marijuana cultivation uh, uh, proposal on the corner of Christian Lane and in State Road. Um, oh, that's the uh, the green green the, green, the, the, green, the, yeah. the, the um, they, the full they, lighting, yeah. Yeah, the purple one. Um, they have identified a, uh, they have selected a grower. Um, it's a company called Dr. Rob Farms. I think I, uh, if I didn't forward you guys the information, yeah, yeah, I'll forward it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they still need the special permit approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, before they would have uh, land use, final land use approval. Um, but the um, operator still needs to come for the board to pursue a host community agreement. Um, so I would anticipate either the next meeting or the meeting after that, um, some representative of the company. And that's the Mustang, meeting. not the grower. Um, Mustang is the, would be the, would be the landlord, so to speak, of the property. It would be the property owner, but the, the HCA is with, is with the grower. Is with the operator, the grower. Okay. Which would be this Dr. Roth Farms or whatever subsidiary yeah. of the subsidiary of Dr. Rob Farms. Mm -hmm. um, Dr. Rob sounds pretty folksy to me. <laughs> no comment. He's a chemist, I think? I don't know. He's got a PhD in something. That's where he's PhD in something. <clears throat> um, Hopefully it's not history. Li the, li um, the library will be, um, the library trustees will be um, Engaging Jones with the architects to do the, the final design of the of the uh, handicap accessibility improvements. That'll happen, I think, probably in June, probably July or August. I think we should probably see final design for that. Um, and then the challenge would be how is it paid for? Um, I think there was a, a hope that there would be grants out there that would be available for this project immediately, but that's it's just really not how those types of grants work. So we'll have to do some investigation as to how those improvements would be made. Um, and then <coughs> th this might lead into, Fred, one of your comments. Um, but So the CPA off-cycle applications, for anyone interested, those are due um, June 11th. So Isn't that election day? Yes. It is. So oh, when you come to vote, you drop off your CPA application. Your CPA application. I like to propose two applications, and, and I guess right now come from uh, this board because I haven't talked to any committees, and I don't know where it would fall on, on the committees, whether it's historic commission or 250th committee, whatever. Uh, what I mentioned to some people this past Sunday was uh, asking CPA funds to fund. Uh, a permanent display of our schools, our two schools that we still are standing and have some artifacts in there, and creating a display at a, a Waitley Elementary School. Permanent display in the hallway or somewhere of a history of the two schools. Uh, when they're constructed, number of students, teachers, principals, historic events, having a permanent display in the building because we, we still have access to to the two buildings uh, and, and I think it, it's it's timely to do it now because this won't be won't be approved for CPA funds till the fall time so it gives us that much more time to do that before the blue school is whatever they start to do and before we decide on a center school how to, how to do that uh, and the second one is We've got a history book that was, actually two history books. The latest one goes through 1971. That was done by Anna, Anna you know. Kane, Ina you know. Kane, our, our librarian. Uh, and I, I think that should be updated at least through, through our, our 250th celebration mm -hmm. at least, because that's when that one ended through 1971. Uh, I don't know how long that process took to do that or when that book actually came out, whether it was for the bicentennial then or after. Uh, but I, I think 
if we're serious about updating the history book, I think the person that, or that would do it or the committee sh needs some time to do that and, and probably be involved in the 250th celebration. Uh, I have somebody in mind that, that has an interest in it, a Whaley resident is, is interested in helping us. Uh, I talked to her about this past Sunday, uh, we didn't talk about the cost, the time period, or how it would be done. Uh, and, and I guess I, I'd like both these projects to be presented to the CPA. I don't, I don't have a dollar figure. We could put something in for a token amount now or something, and, and if we need more, I guess we could ask for more later on, uh, next, next request for CPA funds. But I think it, it's timely now because we're only, well, it keeps what, okay, two years away from a celebration yeah, here. Yeah. And we're just out of the two year mark. Yeah, and, and if we want these to, you know, the, the, the school history could be part of the 250th celebration in some way, have a, mm -hmm. a day or two uh, exhibits and, and literature explaining uh, the exhibits and whatever. And, and the history book would give that person time to, to uh, get involved in documenting our 250th celebration and putting it in a book and, and uh, Are you prepared to write this application up? No, uh, I, I haven't I haven't done it. I don't know whether, I guess first off to see whether the board would I, I agree, agree to do this and, and would it come from the board or from Brian? Or, no, it would come uh, from the board, I think. How would this? Because yeah. someone's well, got to write it. It would I be know easiest if you would write it. Okay. And um, hey, if you provide me a write-up, I can. Amy or I, Amy or I could fill out the form. But then you need a budget. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess. Yeah, and and I don't know what the school can. I haven't heard. You know, it's the school committee if they're interested or not. Have you heard anything? Well, I think mean, if you wrote it, they might be interested. What's right. right. I'm surprised. I'd be shocked if they were not I, interested. But what's your idea for putting on public a permanent display? Like what? Like some examples. Glass case or uh, is it a yeah, I guess or a glass case. I mean, case as far as like all the contents, yeah, the, like it, it's it's hard to do that. There are already things. So much has already been cleaned out and gone. Like the the blue school has been part of the superintendent's office yeah. right. for so long that there's yeah. nothing left. I guess there's a mural downstairs. There's a mural downstairs. Okay. That maybe take a picture of it if you can. Right. I was just saying there could be pictures of lots of things. It could maybe pictures. both of them are really in the form of a book. Well, but but then you have to you, right. you, you have to have a conversation with the school about where yes. they have the space to, to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's not the foyer. So or maybe it's, it's not a very large area. Or maybe or it's a hallway or somewhere yeah. down one of the hallways yeah. or something. Yeah. If it if it is a large book with good quality pictures in it, maybe that is something that's at the elementary school library. Yeah. Even. They could end up yeah. that way. I don't I don't know, but just my thoughts, and I think I, I'd rather see it discuss now and, and rather than a year from now because that's what we're looking at if we miss this CPA yeah. cycle. Well, I would suggest that the application be really well thought out in terms of what that plan would be. Joyce's idea or about the book or where in the school and because yeah. CPA is going to yeah. want it. Because right. I said on CPA, I know right. I, they're going to be looking for detail. Yeah, the nice thing about a book is it doesn't have to be on permanent display. Right. That could be on display. Uh, Maybe annually, or, uh, or what? Yeah. And I, I, you know, it could be that sometimes it's in the Whaley Library downtown, and maybe sometimes it's at the school library. Well, I, I hear the, the, tour. the Historic Society. The historic Society did a display a few years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so they may have a lot of this stuff. Yeah, they may have a lot, of, a lot of stuff collected. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I would suggest that you go forth and multiply. Yeah, if you are willing to write it up. Any suggestions on cost? Uh, what what should we? Well, no, I mean it, it, it depends on what you propose. You got it. You got to yeah. Write the plan and then figure out the cost. Don't do it. You know, as far as the history book goes, I mean, I I know as the as being involved in the 250th committee, we have that has been one of our topics that we had some time ago. Yeah. And again, we as the art, as this committee, we are looking for subcommittees and there has been no one that had came forward to us that said hey I want to write a history book yeah. so uh, and I don't want to 
if it can happen, that would be great. I don't want to take it away from your funding, which you have. But that's well, why. No, and again, it's yeah. we don't have. I mean, if this is a scenario where it could be written as a, as a CPA, and someone's willing to do it, by all means, I would say pursue it. Well, I haven't asked any really any committees. Well, you said you had somebody that wanted to do it. Well, individual, but not on a committee. But, 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 but we can do it. We can drive it. And yeah. if, if part of your if part of your narrative is that it would tie into the 250th, yeah. the 250th would yeah. say that's great because yeah. we have this okay. space, this blank space of, of one need. of the things. Yeah. I and I'm not going to say that it won't work. I would personally like to see it happen. But when as our committee, one of our conversations was is that even in the last 50 years, Waitley has changed in the aspect that we don't have the we felt it was going to be very difficult to get like the the family genealogy, genealogy the, yeah. the, so that you can open the book and, and look at Fred Orlowski and go back and see his father and his grandfather and go back in all the generations. Right. We don't know if that's something that everybody in wait because that, everybody had to provide that information to Ina Kane. Oh, and funny. again, if if whoever's doing this book is going to have to get on the phone or however, whatever form of communication and call every resident in town and say, we need your information. Do people want that anymore? It's, uh, we don't know. That's, but I don't, I don't going back in years, you know, even 50 years ago and certainly 100 years ago when it was done, it, it certainly was something that was very useful. Because yeah. right. people were from town, they stayed, and, but now it's and, and transient. And it more, a lot more transit and people, yeah. To a certain extent, in some parts of town are considered like a bedroom community. They get out of their bed in the morning, they go to work, and yep. they don't even know what the rest of the town looks like. That's because the majority they, now. Yeah. And so we're, we're changing in that aspect, and so whether, but if yeah. if we can make it happen, I'm all but, for but it. But a history book doesn't necessarily have to like record every person who lived here and just think it, there, and it might be it's a different approach to a book that this person sure yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah that person has some ideas by all means let's hear it yeah all right so you're going to make that application we'll put it for both of them the select board can can uh, sponsor it before we go to executive session because I'm, I'm hoping Brian has nothing else that's it okay yeah. yes and our next meeting just not a lot of time but go ahead no um, the books See those books? They're mine. This went to number one in the world. This is the only book in the world <clears throat> that has the names of every victim from 9-11. The curator of the museum wrote it. Um, and I have, from seven years of living in town, I have over 200 photographs that have been on the news. Amazing. Sunsets, sunrises your veterans events, all really good quality. So you should take advantage of what I have while I'm still here. Gail Clare, who did <clears throat> the marathon book, <clears throat> she um, has a book on New York, New York Times bestselling list. She might be able to do the book. I don't know if she could get all the information, but she could put it together. So I'm just coming up with an idea for you guys. You get together with Fred and talk to talk her because the photographs I have, they're good enough to go. They've been on CNN, they've been on 22 News from Whaley. Yeah. And I, I always feel frustrated a little bit because I feel like the town ignores me. And if you only know what I've done for this town and the work that I've gotten out there. But I think, so you, I, I'm willing to work with somebody. But I have amazing photographs of snowstorms and and some of the veterans events that happen in town. So they're all really good quality. So I'm just offering that. That's not why I came tonight. Right. But yeah. The, yeah. But I'm just saying that. Yeah. Yeah. Take advantage of my yeah. work. It, it speaks for itself. I think Elizabeth Warren wrote the introduction to that. Bill Rogers wrote in this book. The curator of the 9-11 Memorial Museum wrote the introduction to this book. They don't throw their names around lightly. Okay, so, oh boy, just sitting here, you guys got so much to deal with. 
there's a huge dog issue going on in town. And I go to the police, I've gone here, no one listens to me. The dog's going to the bathroom everywhere. Um, and everyone tells me, well, we're gonna do something, put some signs up. No one does anything. And people stop in town and take the dogs and back at the town hall. And uh, people go on the front lawn all the time. I had something happen today with a neighbor. And then they told me to clean it up after their dog went. So I just, I know you don't have much time, but I wanted to bring that up that uh, it's really frustrating sometimes. I don't know where to go. I don't know who to talk to. Do I take it up? Do I go to the state police? Do I go to Northampton? Do I get a lawyer? I don't know what to do. It's, it's frustrating. Dog the dog stuff. I don't know. I don't know what to do. I mean, it, it, it's a, it, you, you see it at Hurley. People walk their dogs and they don't clean up after their dogs. Yeah. And so I'm sure it exists, but I don't know what the, what's the. Yeah. Well, I think if someone were to write something for the scoop, that would be a nice article to put in to September to Just remind of people of, of dog yeah. courtesy and that, uh, that that's gonna, because you're the first person I've heard about it from, but that doesn't mean it's not bothering other people. So oh, that, oh, it is. I think the people no, it's okay. People. So, so if you're, uh, if if one, if any one of those people is willing to write up a little article, um, we we have the newsletter. We can put it in there. That's a per, I think a perfect vehicle to make other people aware of it, and then maybe for that same article, we can talk about well, what is the responsibility of the dog owner, and, uh, and, I, and what should what should people do when they see the, the rules or the right. rights being flaunted. I think that would be a perfect thing for that kind of thing. And I don't know if it's true or not. Some people say yes, say, say no, that Waitley does not have a, a, a law that says you have to keep your dog on a leash. So a lot of dogs, local dogs, run around and then you find it on the lawn. And, and so I don't know, do you guys well, know are anyone? You, are you willing to do a little research on that? Yes, I will. I will. And, 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 yeah. and, and I will. See if you or, or one of the other people who are concerned about it, if you're willing to write up something. I'd rather um, have someone else write it, but I'll do research. And, yeah. yeah, and but, so find someone who will write it. Okay. And, uh, and that sounds like a good thing. The next one uh, deadline for submission is not until the end of August. Okay. So you've got some time. Right. But um, seriously, since you brought up the 250th, I think my books speak for themselves. Okay. And I'm willing to offer my work to you guys wow. from, from the town. Is the chair of the 250? She just left. She just left. Yeah. Oh, you have someone here from the committee here? Yeah. Was she it? was. She's not there the 250 anymore. committee is where you should go. Yeah. Can you give me a, a phone number? Brian can. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the other thing is, no. you know the women's oh. marathon? Yeah. Email. Yeah, not phone or email. The women's marathon that happens every year on Mother's Day? It's, it starts at the, you know, right here. It it's yet. a great event. It's incredible. Yeah. All those photos get on the news. They're all mine. Volunteer. So I could give you. S okay. Well, so I just give me a name. Yeah. We'll and I know you guys want to go home. But uh, give me a name and I'll, I will follow up on that. Okay. All right. Um, thank you. Um, we are going to go into the session, the exec, exec, executive session. So. Um, Per Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 3, uh, we will go into executive session. We will not go back into regular session. That means that none of you guys can stay.